All right, boys, every weekend, last time on the podcast, we started to talk about hoarding, and the conversation quickly went from hoarding into Chris jumping in as soon as I mentioned scalping. He's like, I'm so glad you mentioned that. Scalp <laughs> resellers are not scalpers. And then we never talked about hoarding. Dang it, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ricky, Ricky's in the hot seat for this one. So oh. my, my thought process is we go to the swap meet every weekend of our lives, right? We buy stuff. We buy stuff. We buy stuff. Besides hoarding, yeah. the other sub-genre topic with this is we buy things without intention of ever using right yeah and i think and i know uh, most people aren't gonna like to hear this it's pretty common i'd say 80 percent of collectors buy stuff with no intention of using it don't that i i hate to say it ricky maybe you Why give you us call me out give us your thought process <laughs> on it, because it, it's huge <laughs> This is a hoarding so, intervention for Ricky. I mean, I mean who is mom it? come in? Is mom in the room? <laughs> it's probably more more Nicole, but yeah. uh, I I don't know. I, I just buy it because I like it. I like if I like something, I'm gonna get it. The only problem is, it's like I'll like something for a certain time, and then mm. I'll put it in a in a tote bag once that or a tote box. Got it. And then I kind of put put it push it away, push it away. But I still know it's there. I I guess in a way, I'm just I'm I'm collecting just my old schoolness the, the old stuff <laughs> so at what point does it feel like it's hoarding at what point let's say you chris i mean what point do you look at stuff and go i mean I know you don't own a store so it might be a little different but at what point do you go this is this is not the right way to do this so to say i mean space has to probably play into that if mm. you run out of space that's got to be a key element yeah. to it i've been out of space for years <laughs> 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 Mom, come on! Come on. The, the kids coming with tears in their eyes. Mom, we want you we back. We want you to stop. They, it's the, a sickness. You, you go to Ricky's house. You lift up his the crib blanket to look, and it's games in there. And the kids are on the floor. <laughs> Daddy, I'm so cold. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie. Here's here's a true thing. Uh, I hope Nicole is not watching this. But, She's uh, gonna watch it. But uh, some of the stuff, like the I, I like plushies. I like like Pokemon stuff. Mm -hmm. like, I got my kids into Pokemon, so I like. I'm like, oh yeah, my Pokemon stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's yours. It's yours. So it's just another way for me to store it in their room. I, I feel like Ricky's one of those guys, too, that knows he hoards low-key hoards. I wouldn't say you're like the definition of an actual hoarder. An actual hoarder is someone who I think has an, a real problem. They they literally couldn't let go of something if they had to. It tears apart families. Ricky's not there yet. But the funny thing about you with <laughs> yes. you is, is you're the one guy in the group I know who has too much stuff, too much of the same stuff, right? But he's also the one guy that swapped me that will solely seek out the biggest items where I'm like, Ricky, what are you doing? He goes in. I'm just like, what are you picking up? Or he's, he's either picking up like a 10 foot pickle Rick or like a giant Snorlax. And it's like a 15 one. foot one, a giant Stewie that's like this tall. Ricky's not picking up the little items where he's like, oh, this is going to be just added to my collection. He's always buying these, not saying the value is, but the items <laughs> physical is giant. Yeah. So to say, so I'm still bummed. I don't have that Snorlax anymore though. Didn't Nicole make you get rid of it? <laughs> yeah. I thought, I thought the first time I went to Ricky's house, I was like, oh, yeah, he's probably got all the stuff in the world. And then right when I look, right when I go in the door, I see in the closet a Mario paint hat, the corduroy one. And I was like, that's a $400 hat just stuffed in the closet. <laughs> that, that, and he just says, oh, that's nothing. You know, just look at, at Gabe's room. And you just see this giant Bart right there in front of my face. And, like, it just never ends. Ricky's one of those guys that if you go in his house, it's like an endless wormhole of things where you could open up any door at any moment. And you're like, oh, it's just full of games. But it was pretty clean. Like, I've been to your house before. The rest of the house is clean. You do have it kind of yeah. se segregated off your collection. In a way, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's still a shed full that you haven't seen. <laughs> <I'm not> seen. <laughs> and, it, and it is not good. It's like full of black widows and all that. So, but let, okay, real, real, real short answer. What, what percentage do you think? And let's be honest with our fellow collectors of collectors collecting channels, people we know are low key hoarding in a way to your like, oh, if you're never playing because because original topic that Curtis was kind of talking about is buying things with no intention of using it, playing it, touching it, it's just going to sit. Well, I think it applies to pretty much anybody that's a collector. This concept that like you have to use whatever you collect and you hear I hear it a lot. Like I hear people saying, well, I'm selling off my collection because I was never going to play all these games okay. anyway. Yeah. And my thought is like, well, that doesn't necessarily mean you need to sell it just because you weren't going to use it. Like I collect a lot of things like in comics, for instance, like. I read comics on occasion. I'm not going to read all the comics that I have. I Got still it. like to collect them. Yeah. yeah. And an even better example, like games are something you can use, right? Yeah. So I get the concept of like, well, you're not going to use it. You know, I'm going to sell it, I guess, kind of. But like action figures are another thing. Like we're grown men. Like I like to collect like He-Man toys. <laughs> Ricky right? and I play with them when you guys aren't around. Well, so that was going to be my point. <laughs> what I was going to say is like, 
Are we really going to sit at home and play with action figures? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not. Yeah. And, and, I like, mean, maybe with no one around. <laughs> it, it <Ricky's> like, <laughs> I'd say that I'd say where the most downfall is among collectors is most of us that are collecting stuff you collect with the intention, right? Like, I'm going to play that someday. I'm excited. You hear it in YouTube videos. I'm excited to play this game eventually. Yeah. Does it happen? I don't know. I think it's the intent that gets hard. But I think where I struggle is when. It's someone who's like they're not selling, they're not doing any of that. And I'm not saying it's wrong because I don't think there really is a right way to collect, so to say. Yeah. But they'll be like, yeah, oh, I just picked up this NES again. And again, they're not selling or anything, but I know that they have like 14 of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, here, here's another thing. I, well, okay, well, let, 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 so I don't understand the multiples of it, though. Like I collect a lot of things. I don't yeah. have multiples of things. I, so I, why I, do you have like 14 NESs? What I, is the I, idea behind that? I keep forgetting like what I have, but like uh, I, I know some of them I like. I like I would sell to buddies like, oh, you need one. Yeah, I got I got one. And, and it, it just in my head, I'm like, oh, I already sold it. But I keep buying them or the intention to flip like, OK, I will flip that eventually. And then yeah. you just kind of forget about and, it. And I feel like that's a lot of collectors like they want to they want to get good stuff now because we've learned over the years yep. that if if you get the good stuff now, it's going to be worth a ton later. Yep. That's why, like, I bought a ton of Wii U stuff. <laughs> Curtis is waiting to say something. No, I don't no, know what it, he's, he's looking at me funny because it was funny because last night I bought that uh, that. The sign right here off of yeah. whatnot, and then show the people, bro. They can see that. And then uh, Riff goes, "Oh yeah, he has another one. He's got like three of them in this little drawer." Pulls out all three, and I'm like, "Why do you have that many? They're cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're awesome. But you know, it's just funny that you you have all well, that stuff hidden well, away. Like some stuff you collect, it's mainly for you to see. Because honestly, mm -hmm. what, what am I gonna actually do anything with a statue or yeah. stuff like that? So. And I do have multiples of a couple things. I take that back. Like little Samson. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to flex here. Wait, wait a second. Wait. So. Okay, okay. You shut up right now. I went to his store, and this guy is like showing us. He's like, yeah, I got this bin of stuff. I don't know what it is. Wait, hold on. Let me. I got this bin of stuff. I don't know what it is. Man, and I look right, in the Rocky. bin, and he's got multiple little Samson CIB. Didn't know he had them. I did forget I had. There was a moment. I had two of those. There was a, that <laughs> sick part of me for a moment when you're like, I didn't know I had two of those, and I'm like, I could have pocketed that. <laughs> he had no idea. He had I two would of not those. have known. I did forget that I had two of those. I do also like um, sculptor's cut clay fighter. I think I have three of those. Oh. One All right, let's bring so, in Chris's wife and family. <laughs> <laughs> <Come on. laughs> it's just a way so, to lure you in. <laughs> but, so my thought process behind that is though is that those are so rare yeah. that. For me, I'm like, all right, how many little Samsons have True. I seen in over the last 10 years? Yeah, Probably yeah. only two. And I'm like, all right, I'm not going to see any more of these. I might not see any more. So True. I'm going to put these away. Yeah. Not Is it an investment thing? Kind of. But it, to me, it's more of like, I'm not going to see this ever again. It's also I'm like, going to hoard them. So that kind of goes in line with what you were saying. I can see bit. it like, like yeah, almost yeah. like a currency. He's like holding gold in his safe. He's like, I'm just going to put them away and they're going to gain. He's a little it, bit more of a spec speculator. Yes. Is that the word? Speculator? Uh, yes. And I do like to speculate on things. That's funny because yes. when, when you and our buddy Caleb from Phoenix Resale were in the same room, he's like the opposite of a speculator. He's like anti-speculator. You're a speculator. So it's so funny to watch you guys do business where he's like, I don't freaking care what it might be worth. And you're like, but it could be. And it was just a fun conversation to watch. Well, it, it's funny you bring that up because when Caleb was there, that game that he wanted, that Go Go Hyper Grind, yep. was actually a game that I had speculated on literally like eight years ago. I bought that game. <laughs> it came into one of my shops for like, and it was trading in, I think it was selling for like 20 bucks at the time. Woof. And I was like, what on earth is this game? Like, I'd never seen it. Yeah. So I took it and I just put it away in a bin. Yeah. And I was like, I, I don't even know what this yeah. is. And it literally wasn't until Caleb came probably eight years later that I was like, wait, this game is worth $400. Damn. So that was like a speculation. Into the thing. theme song. Speculation. <laughs> no <laughs> breathing. <laughs> and, then, and then when Chris just goes into this back office, he pulls out these 1985 Nintendo documents. Like He's like, oh yeah, I just had these yeah. in the back like with just a little dust I, I, it's beautiful. Think the, I think the best way to look at it is is there is no necessarily I don't think there's a right or wrong way to collect mm -hmm. but as we touched on the podcast last time is there is always like those moments where you kind of have to look and be like okay am, is this the healthy way to collect is this the healthy way to so to say resell as well there's always that that moment all right we're gonna transition into something a little bit more fun we're gonna do our uh to agree or disagree yeah segment baby oh. okay okay well, let, let me get let me get the, the the papers for this guys we're high production here high you've production. never seen signs this nice everybody gets an agree <laughs> sign <laughs> all right C curtis doesn't because he's giving out the questions no no not oh. and in a disagree so I color coded them red and green in case you guys can't read them. At least you can see, you know, the audience can see. And Curtis is going to read a statement and you hold up 
if you agree or disagree. Oh, and this some is gonna theme be song good. we don't have. Yeah. Beanie, beanie. And we're going to do my game show voice. Yes, and yeah. we're back with another segment today. I'm going to say our first one of the night is the PlayStation 2. Is it overrated? No, the Not a question. Yes. Is the PlayStation 2 is overrated? That's to say that's high quality. <laughs> We have up two agrees and a disagree. Oh. <laughs> Ricky, I think we're going to have, uh, in the typical words of Lucille Ball, Ricky, you got some explaining to do. The, oh, the PS2 is overrated. Let's hear. I I just, I didn't enjoy uh, It's a great console. Don't get okay. me wrong. It's a great console. I just, it, there was, the games didn't do it for me. It wasn't. It, it was barely a step up from the PS1. Chris would disagree because crazy. he just doesn't want people to come after him. <laughs> I know. He's like, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> All right, Ricky, I held up agree too. I, I'm going to be honest. Go ahead. I like the PS2. Yeah, I like it, but. I, I will say I never found a game on it that was like my whoa game, right? And there's yeah. a lot of consoles where I find like that game where I'm like, you could almost name any console. Not any, but most consoles you can name. And I could at least name you one game. Of course, there's a ton of the PS2 I love. Mm. But to where I'm like. Oh, dude, this game like sets changed it, it, sets it apart. Like without that game, yeah. like, you know, PS1, that could be like Silent Hill, boom, Silent yeah. Hill's everything. Chris, what do you do? not know? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, maybe I should have changed my <laughs> answer. The more you think of, well, I'm actually sitting here trying to think of like my favorite PS2 game. And I'm like, I oh. can't even think of what You're thinking it was. PS1 games, aren't you? Well, PS1, yeah. But like I could think of so many PS1 you games. You know how much hate we're going to get? I think like PS2 <laughs> is like one of the most loved consoles of all time. But when I look at the library of PS2, I'm like, man, that is an incredible library. There's so many like good games, it good is. games on it. For sure there is. Just pers this is personal, guys. Yeah. This is a yeah. personal thing <laughs> but like, be. you're hitting some heartstrings back home and even if you mention like original xbox i can think of some like really great favorite games but ps2 like nothing comes to mind for me right away oh shoot i can't uh, curtis gets to the next one. Like, all right <laughs> and we're, all righty and we're on to the next one super mario world is the best mario video game oh man <laughs> i love a ricky is straight to it i love him I love Definitely it. agreeing with I you. I love that. it. All right, yeah. Riff, you got some slain to do. All right, so Super Mario <laughs> World, I will say, is the pinnacle of platforming. I will say it is the pinnacle <laughs> platforming game. And I'd say in the past years, you could easily argue with me like every other year, like Mario 2 is the best. Mm -hmm. uh, to Mario World's the best. Mario 2 is the best. Mario. So it depends when you ask me. That was until Mario Odyssey came out. Something and I've said this before on the show. Now the, you're, you guys will get this. Uh, at least you two. Well, Curtis is not a father. Probably somewhere out there, but we are <laughs> fathers. So check this out. I remember being a kid playing Nintendo 64, kind of beating it, going through the motions. Bowser, the th this and that. My dad's there. My family's there. It was like a big moment in my life, right? For video games. Playing Mario Odyssey. It was the first game I got to see my kids play. And like they were emotional. Oh, we beat Bowser, screaming, yelling, like that experience. And I looked down as a dad. I'm like. I'm the dad now. Like, that's me now. And that, aside from how great the game was, I think that it was emotions mixed with, I think, a 10 out of 10 video game um, just put me over that level of like, okay, this is my favorite Mario game of all time. That That's why. Otherwise, Mario World, yes, I'm, I'm with you. It's rotating top two always, so... That was a good answer. That was a good answer. <laughs> like, All right. I don't think we need to argue that. <laughs> I don't think we need to elaborate too much on that one, but we're on to the next one. No, 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 no. I want the voice. Oh. All righty. <laughs> this is going to be a fun one. Ricky has a hoarding problem. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, was Chris. All right. I mean, Chris is the only one. <laughs> you know why I put a green? <laughs> Because I hear it from your wife. <laughs> Every time I leave the house, I got a pinch in there. What did he sell? Make sure he sells everything. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I disagree because I've actually bought quite a few things off you now. I was going to say Chris disagrees because like, he has a hoarding problem. <laughs> Reward harder to the next. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We're going on to the next one. The world is better off without social media. Can I make this bigger? Yeah. That's an easy one. Yeah. That's... I think there's so many pros to it. And I think that's always the argument for people with social media. Like, but there's so many good things. And there is. There is. But there's just also, put it this way. I actually have a great example for this. I deleted social media about, what, six, seven years ago now? Yeah. I'm trying to remember when it was, putting a timestamp on. I think it's when Obama was still president. So whenever that is. I remember I deleted social media 
and my mental state, what, I'm not equating it to any certain thing, but I just remember my mental state is like, sense. And I'm like, man, this is nice. I think the biggest thing that comes from that is just like, you're not putting on like a, a face for anybody. You're yes. just putting, it's just you. You know what I mean? It was almost a weird moment. Like I remember, I, I truly remember telling myself like, whoa, it's weird. Like, I don't care what anybody else is like. I've learned to not care what anyone's doing because you got so used to knowing what people are doing. Yeah. You know, people are like, oh yeah, you remember Billy from school? And you're like, oh yeah, I saw him as a kid now this and that. But in my brain, I'm like, I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like it was good to be like, man, I didn't need that stuff in my life, so to say. Yeah. Life stories with Rift today. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, on to the next one. Nintendo is better than Sega. Oh. oh. That's an easy one. We got three fan. You say that's an easy one. Explain yeah. yourself to the Sega fans right now. What? What? Okay, so what to you makes an easy agree? I had to think for a split second, even though I fully agree. Well, first off, growing up, I had both. Okay. So I, had, oh. I was a Nintendo and a Sega kid. Are we talking you had Nintendo? Uh, I had original SNA. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, I had Genesis, Sega CD, okay. Sega Saturn. So did you have the Nintendo with the, Super, the Sega Master System paired or no? Or was it Super Nintendo Genesis was the pairing you had to rival? Because um, I think that's my question is like, you almost have to have two from the same generation growing up to be able to compare uh yeah i mean i had i had all of them somehow okay. i even had a 32x when i was a kid which what is a flex, crazy. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know i've had this discussion with my brother i'm like how did we get all these dad, systems? Man, are you rich, man? no my dad hated video games <laughs> really yeah he did not buy any of them for us i somehow we got what's them he think of you now you disappointment <laughs> <laughs> he came to the store when i first opened and he was like what is this he was like this is enough to take care of your family <laughs> he since appreciates it more that's awesome but uh, um, yeah, no, growing up, I don't know. The Nintendo, uh, okay. uh, Sega's good. I do like, there is a For lot sure. of good Sega oh, games. Great games. But I, nothing tops Nintendo to me. Original Nintendo I mean, in particular. It, it also depends. Like, if you go, like, uh, 16-bit and down, I'm going to say Nintendo kills it. But, like, Dreamcast era versus, mm. like, N64, I'm like, mm. dear God, Dreamcast was amazing. Mm. I mean, I Dreamcast love N64. Dreamcast was amazing. But those graphics, I remember playing Virtual Tennis. I'm not going to lie. I love that game. Why did we play that so much? Oh, my gosh. We played that all the We'd go to, like, arcades. We'd be sitting there playing this Virtual Tennis for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. But, yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, like, like uh, the graphics and all that stuff was, like, insane back then. Like, I think, for that. I think more recently, at least uh, for us, I think, we've, we've always kind of liked both. Yeah. But I feel like in recent years, we've kind of appreciated Sega more. Not saying I like it more. For sure, I'm Nintendo fanboy for sure. Yeah. But I, uh, we have a talk about fanboy. I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there was one system that I would actually like to go back and explore more titles, though, it would be the Sega Genesis. I feel like there, I, I see so many games on there that I'm like, man, I never played There it. are some what fire is that ones. Game? Yeah. yeah. All righty. <laughs> transitioning on to another one. We're going to go to People Are Too Sensitive in Modern Times. <laughs> <laughs> Blow this thing up. <laughs> hey, all it takes to know the answer to this question is just read any comment section, you know? And I, I say, I'll firmly say this doesn't, this isn't like uh, exclusive to like one type of people or the other. I think everybody gets upset about everything too easy these days. Hopefully yeah. our podcast can, can break that, you know, be a little insens insensitivity training. Yeah. Bring a little light to the dark side. Yeah. I mean, I like it, but, and now we're going to go on to the next one. Goldeneye 007 is still fun. No, oh, no, so way. no way! <laughs> for I those, thought you guys were going to be agreed for sure. Yeah. <laughs> for those audio, for those audio listeners out there, this is three disagrees. Okay, wow, Goldeneye, great game. Great what game. happened? Great. Why are you holding up disagree? I'll be honest, I was never a big Goldeneye fan. Oh, really? Never. I know everybody loves that game, but I, first of all, Nintendo 64 for me is not my system. I was a PlayStation fan. Boy, okay. So that was my... I And I had a Nintendo 64 too, and I never played... Oh, Curtis. <laughs> I know when you, people, you say that, some people are just like, oh my <laughs> no, God, okay. I love it so much. It's all opinion, man. It just breaks my heart a little bit. You know, It yeah. doesn't make me love you any less. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and even if I've, I've played the game, yeah. even uh, to me back then, I didn't think it was that great, and it definitely... Definitely, to me, does not hold up now. It, Just it, my opinion. But it didn't age well, especially after like the Call of Duties came out. All like how well, beautiful yeah. the controller was. Yeah. Like it. Have you tried playing with those yellow buttons? It's the worst. Well, so so Ricky and I, we grew up playing that. We yeah. loved Goldeneye. I think we, we played it together quite oh, a bit so too. Much. Yeah. But then there was a time, like what was it? Maybe like seven years ago or something. 
where it was like a guy's night. We're all chilling. We're like, dude, dude that was Goldeneye. Tall. Let's throw in Goldeneye. It's going to be oh, the yeah. best. Like, we love Goldeneye. We're like, woo, boys <laughs> night, Goldeneye. We turned it on, and I'm not joking. <laughs> Two minutes in, we're all just like, yeah, woo Kind of like looking around like, do we all agree this sucks under our breath? <laughs> it was just so hard to play. We well, I get, Then again, we were very, we got very into the Call of Duties for yeah. a while. I mean, I got my clan tag tattooed on my body. <laughs> so, <laughs> that is my yeah. Call of Duty clan really? tag. I mean, that's not saying much. I have my Call of Duty clan tag. I got River City Ransom. I got, uh, what other character? I got Cuphead. I got Simpsons. I got a, a Switch port. I got an NES port. It's not saying much, but yeah. Now, are you into Halo too? No, not no. really. You're did like did four, I ever tell you how player like Halo? Oh, he's crazy. Good. How do you not have like rock you, launchers and swords I, I, only? I did. I'm just saying it wasn't my obsession. <laughs> I know. I loved it. Because four player Halo, like when I was in college, that's all we played. And I went back, I was at a convention out here maybe like five years ago, and I was playing with my son four player Halo, and I was like, whoa, this holds up. It oh, was yeah. still super fun. Yeah. Do you know how a, a, a sassy Master Chief says hi? No. Hey, hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to transition. We're going to come, come back to something different now. We're going to go on to the next topic. We're going to go, are gaming expos dead? Ooh, I like this topic. So, okay, I think this, so this was kind of popularized. I saw a couple channels kind of uh, poking this idea around. Uh, shout out to Side Scrollers. They're back. They did it. Talking about E3 is dead was kind of the tagline of that. And that's an interesting topic because we've been to E3s. We like E3s. You run a convention. I think there's so much to say about it. Maybe a good question for you, Chris, right out of it is E3 de is, is dead, it died, right? And it kind of died during COVID-ish time. What is it about E3 that's dead that conventions, though, are, you might tell us, booming, doing well, coming up? What's, I mean... Well, first off, does anybody... I don't... I didn't read too much on the E3 thing. I heard about it. Do you guys know the particulars of what went on there? No, but from what my understanding is, is kind of when it went out, is the kind of the unanimous tone of people was like, oh, no, it's dead. But a lot of people are like, Man, like, do we really care? Like, it, E3 was so much more important, think, back in the day, right? Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo. This is pre-internet, pre-major internet, so to say. Now it's almost like companies are just releasing this stuff when it comes out. Hey, a new game's coming out. You're developing a new game. Boom, here's a trailer. You almost don't need to wait for that E3 moment to be like, woo, like, here it comes, here it comes. Yeah. We went to them. They were still fun. It's more, I think it was more of a, a, a fun thing to have the memories but I would say in, in recent years when we went, it wasn't like that experience that I'm sure people got in the 90s of feeling like, holy cow, I didn't know this was coming. I didn't know this existed, so to say. Well, now in most cases, you think about like how systems are set up now. It's like you buy the game and you're just basically becoming the beta tester for them. Before, it used to be like there's the project and then let, let it see come to life and then you get the finished product. Yes. Now everybody's just like, oh, now I got this upgrade. I got to not upgrade, but like you had to get another update that's like 70 gigs. And you're like, well, that kind of sucks. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Have but, you guys ever been to a PAX East? No. No. PAX. So PAX does something very similar. Like I've been to PAX, well, any of the PAXs, okay. not just PAX East. But PAX East, when I went to it, did like basically the big Nintendo, Twitch, Microsoft, Sony launches so i don't know if maybe e3 went under just because pax kind of stole that I, environment from them and the big developers are like well, we, don't, we don't need e3 anymore i'm not sure if he's got poop face let's hear it <laughs> I, I, i'll just be honest I'll, i i feel like there's no good games right now like great games that you they would need to open up an e3 for like when we went to e3 the smash bros for the switch was coming out I just remember everyone packing in like, whoa, like, like cheering it on. But like right now, what are you going to cheer for? Remakes? I get what you're saying. That's actually really it's, an yeah. interesting topic because I feel like E3 is, would be more justified if it's one of those, because there's those generational launches of games where it's like the world is hype. I'm yes. talking like a new, open, like first party, first party, a new Mario game. Just like, this is it. Like it's oh. an, a, a mainline Mario game, a new whatever it may be a new big halo before they were putting them out every you know every other year but i feel like that's when e3 felt justified like you said you yeah. needed that that moment of hype but now i'm really trying to rack my brain what kind of games would come out that would make me feel like dude i gotta be there for this announcement like i gotta be there in that moment and live that moment yeah except that you do have three pretty prominent developers like those companies are all competing against themselves yeah. so i still feel like it's a good platform for them to like yeah be like all right our mario game is better than your new halo coming out okay so you know what's, what I mean? the, what's the last like yeah. big game that had the world excited i'm talking everybody like holy mother this is out like i, I mean i'm like you probably do the example smash bros smash i think bros, was a unanimous i feel like <laughs> breath of the wild was Maybe. pretty breath of the wild, that's 
Maybe Grand Theft Auto Five because that, that was, was like, a big one too. So we're thinking maybe the last big, at least our, in our Nintendo fanboy heads, is like the pr- the early Nintendo Switch days, right? Like the first year of it being out. We got Breath of the Wild, we got Odyssey, we got Mario Kart Eight, technically whatever, but uh, <laughs> Smash Bros. Those are kind of like those big ones. But I'm really, I mean, there was good big ones that came out like Death Stranding and stuff. But I don't think they were ones that like the world was unanimously like. Holy mother. We're probably missing, and the audience is like, you guys are stupid. You guys yeah. missed this game. <laughs> you big <laughs> dummies. They're all on their keyboards just searching stuff for us. <laughs> you idiots. <laughs> but here's another question for you, Chris. I guess, like, we talked about it just a little bit, but what kind of guests are you seeing that it's kind of like a different scene? Well, so, like, the, I mean, when we're talking about PAX and E3. Pl- plug your expo, bro. <laughs> yeah. Retro World Expo. I've never but been. I'm more in the, like, mid to... <laughs> Well, there's two different scenes. There's right. the the PAX is, uh, you know, that's like newer stuff. In fact, like PAX, like if you're a retro gamer and you want to vend just selling retro games, there's a few vendors at PAX that are like grandfathered in, but they won't let new retro gaming vendors in. Really? So they just want it to be like new age stuff. Even though they started off, my understanding of their history was they were Penny Arcade Expo out of Washington, like I want to say something like 20 plus years ago. They were basically the first retro gaming convention. And then they expanded and they grew into PAX East, which is now possibly even taken over E3. So I think that they've kind of filled that void as like, we're the number one like new Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, mm. Twitch kind of platform. But underneath them is all of the retro gaming scene, convention scene, which is, in my opinion, thriving but changing. Okay, um, explain. Yeah, so thriving as in, there's not a ton of new ones coming up right now. Like Retro World has been around eight years. Eight years ago, a lot of new conventions started, like us, um, Retro Game Con, Long Southeast Island Game Retro Exchange, Ga- Southeast Game Exchange, um, and a lot of these convention owners, like myself, we kind of all know each other, but Got we it. all started, and we've all done pretty well. There's only been a few that have maybe kind of fizzled out. Okay. Um, so it's it's doing well. It's thriving. But the scene I've started to notice, to answer your question, Curtis, in the last year, probably two years, is it started to switch into a lot of anime, a lot of guest mm. speakers, uh, not guest speakers uh, and guests that are like voices of anime. Yes. And the anime crowd is definitely like, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It. It's just filtered into like, they, and they kind of go hand in hand, but that's kind of the I'm big I'm an switch. anime guy, man. You know, are you? You know what I found interesting? A, a couple conventions I went to, I would see the lines, like like say for guys like Matt Pat or Completionist or whoever these guys are, you know. Um, sometimes their lines would be double to triple. Some of these big names, I'm not going to name big name voice people. And I'm like, that's interesting. Like, what is it? that? I guess it's just maybe you pulling that type of audience. And that's, they're probably on YouTube telling the audience to come <laughs> versus the actors. Like, I'm not going to go telling everybody, you know. Yeah, you either know or you don't, right? Yeah. But, and, all right, so here's another question for you. Like, what does it really take to, like, prepare for an expo? Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> much work. <laughs> Blue, like, every single day for, yeah. for the whole year. I, I, Lan- my partner is Lance Cortez, um, one of the co-founders of RetroWare. RetroWare. And um, we... We take like a one or two month hiatus after the show, and so it's probably ten months of planning. Wow! Yeah, literally every day, emails, coordinating with vendors, guests, flights. Um, there's so much that goes into these shows. That sounds like a lot of work. Do you? But have I love to it. It's like lock down the same location every year. Uh, yeah, we 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 expanded from a smaller location about four or five years ago. We're at the Connecticut Convention Center, which is a pretty big venue. We're in like seventy thousand square feet, and. Um, <laughs> So we've gotten to the point where, yeah, we're like, these are the dates we want every year, the end of August. Um, we try to avoid other shows. There's a lot of that that goes on. Too much. It's too much work. Just, just <laughs> it's quit. a lot of work. <laughs> just quit, bro. Your wife told me you're working too much. Bring her in, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's honestly been like a passion of love. Like, I love yeah. doing it. That's kind of my, like, gift back to the community, I feel like. Like, I go there every year. Um, I love it. It's like three days of just craziness. But... Um, yeah, it's not necessarily for the money, that one. That, wow. That's a... Uh, Have you necessarily had, like, a really bad story, like something crazy actually happening at those like, while you're running it? No. Um, or is it pretty much civil, pretty much through the whole Chris time? Is, Chris is perfect. Look at him. You think well, he's going to make a mistake? No, well, no one's going to... How dare you, know, you ask Chris that no, question? I mean, <laughs> well, there's a million fires to put out. Yeah. Like, that's what I've heard from Jay from the Game Chasers. Every time I'm with him, he's, we're like homies. Like, what's... I mean, we're, Friends, but the minute the convention starts, he's like, "You gotta go. There's a problem here. This vendor, this person to show up. There's a problem here, a problem there." And I'm just like, "Oh my gosh!" That Nine looks million fires yeah. to put out. In fact, uh, I was at Mag uh, Magfest one year. You guys know Magfest, mm-hmm. and uh, the owner of that, I forget his name. We went to his panel, 
and he would somebody asked him like what's it been like putting on magfest for all these years and that's a big show with like yeah, so much yeah. coordinate he was like picture a train that's on fire and you're on the train like trying to put water on it <laughs> that's to like put running the a fires YouTube out channel, bro. while it's going but the, you're, you know you never completely put the fire that's the train exact, out and that, i was like man that's the best explanation that's great for youtube like, too i'm gonna use that because every week you're like this and then the, the, the day's approaching where the video goes out and there's the thumbnails not made the ad the sponsor's not yep. ready this is ready you're just like it's coming i, yep. I don't know what to do right and it's never perfect and then never you're like perfect. all right well let's I mean, go Pixel Game Squad is pretty perfect. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> now, talking for you guys, a question for you guys: like, yes. so you guys are the people that experience expos. Like, what are some of the grails that you've came across that you like maybe regret not getting or actually did buy? R regrets are mostly in signs because yeah. a lot of times when you travel, that's the only bummer about certain conventions when you're not local. Is Ricky and I are like we like again what we talked about earlier? Ricky, Ricky and I don't really necessarily be like, oh, look at this cool small item. We're like, look at that sign that's six foot by six foot. What am I going to do with it? Sometimes I'll pay people to like. Put it on Mercari for zero dollars and then ship it and I'll buy it from there. Don't don't do that, people. It's I don't know if it's wrong. <laughs> I don't know. What, what and I'm curious what your guys' opinions are of like shows. Do you like your guests at a lot of shows? Yes. Yeah. So do you like doing them? Do you feel like it's work? Like what is your take on them? I mean, I love it because I'm literally running around the whole convention like, what can I buy? That's literally <laughs> me. I'm just like running. Oh, look at how big that thing is. Can I shove it in my truck before we go? <laughs> <laughs> I am on the level of I love conventions. I hate panels. I Do hate doing really? them. Yeah. Well, and I say this with love. I love meeting people, but I like people to meet us in our natural environment, which is out there hunting with them. That's more fun for me. And I tell that at this point, back when we first started, I, I, I was very like, yeah, I'll do it. Sure. But nowadays I'm pretty much like, yeah, man, I'll go. Sure. Like I'll, I'll be a guest. Thank you. I, you know, we're, we're, we're very humbled that we get to do it, but I'm like, just so you know, don't ask me to do a panel. <laughs> like, <laughs> so you, you won't do them. I don't really do them. You don't do them. It's, it's very rare that I do them. Really? Very rare that you, I do them. You don't do them either? Very <laughs> rare that I do them. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give me a little change. <laughs> you gotta give them a little push to go, you know yeah. what I mean? But anyway, uh, are there any plans for like which ones you guys are gonna already pretty much go to this? We're gonna go to a ton. I can't even name. Hopefully going to Retro World this year too, so yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. Yep. All right, this is gonna be a good one. We're gonna go on to our next topic, topic number three. Jealousy and competitiveness between YouTubers. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I feel like there's probably a, a a couple people we can make sore with this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, being on YouTube is an interesting space. Um, there's definitely jealousy involved in it. You know, I don't want to call out channels or names, but it's such a, a it's such a weird like closet thing to feel because most YouTubers you talk to, they're not going to tell you. You know that they have these feelings of oh shoot, this person grew and I didn't. Why is that person growing and I didn't? Why is this person's thumbnails suck, but they're growing? Why does their videos do this? And it's weird because you almost have to be really dicey with how you approach it to people because you never know how they actually feel. I think the best way to to, to go about it is, have we ever been jealous? Like realist, real, have you, have, have you ever been jealous? And if you haven't, say you haven't, about someone's views, Channel growing, success, response, whatever it may be. Not really. I'm not really, I don't know. I'm not, I guess I'm not really jealous of like that. Cause, I, cause honestly, I, even if, put it this way, if, even if we didn't film, we would still be doing it. True. Yeah. So it's like, we do it for, for the love. Honestly, how, how long do we do without getting any, <laughs> any like eight and a half years. So, and, and I think that's funny when so many YouTubers will come on and they'll want that quick reward right dude yeah. i want my reward yeah. and i'm like hey man i just started to get like 50 bucks a month after like eight years and that was like <laughs> working all day every day doing it and again youtube is fun as can be yeah. but it's a lot of work when you're the one putting in the, you're shaking it's, your head i'm yeah. shaking my head because it sounds like starting a business like people yeah. are like oh you just built these stores and they're just running and you i'm like dude you have no idea how much work went into this and there was so much low points and so much not making money and you yep. know before you got to this point there's even people who like will quit so prematurely and i'm like oh my gosh like you just started and they'll and sadly you know that people aren't in it for the right reasons when the complaints start like after like six months. Like, dude, come on, I'm not getting the proper views yet. And this, and I'm like, you just started yeah. this. And and I will say, and I'll, I'll to answer your your question, Curtis, is there jealousy amongst YouTubers? I'm not gonna name a name for sure, but I've talked to a specific person. This is just an example. There's mm -hmm. a lot of people like that, but I just recently had a specific conversation with someone 
where he quite literally texts me like, I'm extremely jealous and it bothers me and I hate to admit it. Of you? Yes. Wow, and he told you? Yeah. Uh, what was the word? Jealousy and also like something like uh, like heartbroken or something that it's like happening to us and not them, which is kind of a weird thing to say. And not like jealous in a good way. Like, man, I'm so jealous of how successful you are. Like worded like that. I commend him that he was willing to say it, but no, yeah, it was more like almost like annoyed. Like it didn't, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm a big believer that you should be able to say what you got to say to someone, no matter how it's going to feel. So I, I commend him for telling me that. But at the same time, I was like, wow, that's like real, you yeah. know? And how do I think it, it's weird because my brain would have thought that I would have been jealous, right? Like if you would have told me, let's use retro Rick as an example, he came in the scene and he blew up, blew up past all of us. And he will be the first to admit pretty much taking our formula, not taking it because a million people do it, but like. Hey, I'm, I started the channel because you guys are inspired by you guys. I'm going to do it. He did it. And it just went and quadrupled us quickly. And I can firmly say I didn't sense any jealousy. And I don't know if it's because he's a good guy or what, but maybe if he was a, a jerk, maybe I would have felt jealous. But I mean, you got to think about his background. He's definitely had that like that the religious background. He's like really like he's just a nice guy in general. He Everything so he's nice. done. He's like, one of the nicest people I ever met. Even the way he talks and handles himself with you. It's just like you already know he's like that gracious person. He very much is one of those people. I've always kind of used that as a good gauge for good friends. Okay. Like as we grow up, you know, whatever, wherever we came from. Right. And we none of us probably had any money, maybe. And then you grow up and then like some people are going to be more successful than yeah. others, right? And the friends that, like, can't handle other people's success, I'm like, well, maybe you're not a, such a good friend. Me, Absolutely. personally, like, the people, my the friends that I've had that have been really successful, I'm like, dude, that's freaking awesome, like, yeah. Yeah. rooting them on. So I, I've never really understood that jealousy of, like, people you know. I actually think our channel and what we do on the Pixel Game Squad channel with the game hunting is actually a good testament to healthy because we're in a situation where... We are all competing, so to say, for items, right? We're all at the same swami. We're all looking yeah. for the same things, and we're all there. But and we don't have to rehash that. But we 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 have fun, <laughs> all of us. We're yeah. all there having a good time. So yeah. it's like but there is no je is there jealousy? No, no jealousy. <laughs> but I want to find that grail. <laughs> 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 I want to be the first one in the booth to be no, like, yes, no, got it. Get the <laughs> heck out of my way, Ricky. Look, I, I'm just a bad hunter. That's all I know. I wake up at 5.15, I get there before them, and they still have way more stuff than me. So I'm just bad Curtis at it. This is a funny game. I really love him, though, bro. But anyway, uh, why do you think uh, small channels are outperforming larger channels? Oh, so I, I think the better way to word that would be, I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I get where you're coming out with this. There is a lot of those big YouTubers who are getting those views that small YouTubers get or small YouTubers are outperforming them. And it, it comes with a lot of things. It could be that when you started a long time ago, you got really big out of nowhere and then your audience just kind of died, right? But you have 3 million subs, but here comes whoever, Johnny Joe, Johnny Joe's channel has 40 K subs and he's getting 40, 50, 60 K views per video when the same guy with 3 million is doing that. And again, I think one of the biggest attributing factors is like, I don't want to name names, but I know a guy who, who does that and he, he blew up and then, now he gets like the same views as we do and he's got like multiple millions of subscribers. And another thing that I think that can be attributed to that, which has scared me before and scared other people that I know too, is that sometimes viral videos can be your worst enemy to making your channel look good. And Caleb, Phoenix Resell, actually was kind of one of those people that kind of put that in my head early on. He's like, yes, shorts are great. YouTube shorts, they're a good way to get audience. You get a ton of viewers from it. But sometimes you get these people in there where you have a, shorts are very easy to go viral. Shorts go viral very easy, quicker than your YouTube channel ever will. They just do. My regular videos on Pixel Game Squad, you know, we've been doing it forever. There's a ton of videos with 60, 70, 80 to 150K views. But the shorts, when I started doing those, there's multiple with well over a million. There's a bunch of them hit 200, 300K within a week. That's just how they are. But with that, you get a lot of subscribers from that. And a lot of them are in this mode. Flip, 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 sure I'll sub. <laughs> flip, flip, sure I'll sub. And they see you in their main timeline and go, I don't even know what this is. That's my way of like subbing for real. <laughs> well, do you think in the last like uh, what, what I've noticed in the last year is there's been some big YouTubers, gaming YouTubers. Mm -hmm. Again, I won't mention names, but that have announced some retirements, you know, like they're stepping out of it. And do you think it's kind of similar to just our attention spans with like any kind of media? Like, all right, there's a Walking Dead show that's on. They can only run it like eight seasons or whatever they're on before people just lose interest in it. it Do you think it's like that with YouTubers? Yes. Yeah, it, it is. And it's so hard because there's some of those OG YouTubers who are still around, who are, who are crushing it. And I say bravo to them because they either stuck around for it 
or and they wrote out those dips right of being dead it'd be but youtube is also a different space than typical media because let's say the walking dead right or whatever let's say a show i don't know any show that got stopped airing recently let's just say a show called camera crew let's just say super hot it blows Great up show. it goes well it's one of that show awesome. <laughs> but then it dies right and it's dead on youtube as a youtuber you can keep that going night you can not always first you can't speak for everybody a lot of people can keep that going like, well, i'm just gonna keep doing it and leave the channel up so to say but on regular tv regular media you can't right the network's not going to put out millions of dollars mm. to let you keep writing it out and hopefully one day it has a resurgence you know and that's why i think also like you know modern media is doing a lot of like remakes and all that stuff now too because it's like yeah. all right that time died let's see if we can milk it again so to say but i don't know i think there's definitely similarities in it but uh yeah it, it's a hard one youtube's a weird world man it will never be understood it will never be understood yeah one last question for you like why are small youtubers channels quick to judge sponsorships <laughs> Let me hear it. <laughs> oh, boy. Do I want to open up that can of worms? Um, <laughs> I won't say the word, but I'll say it. Jealousy. It's 100% jealousy. And you can say it's not all you want. But if I ever in my heart am bothered or upset by somebody doing something that that, general, that, that, that won't affect my day, it won't affect anything, right? It'd be like me going into Chris's store and him being like, hey, before you go in, you got to ring this bell and I get 10 bucks from the company. Like if you get upset at something like that, that doesn't affect you in any certain way, it's odd to me because that's a very common thing. And it's very common to call them a sellout or very common to, to call someone you're just, you're a shill, so to say, but I hate to break it to you. If you've been watching TV, you've been watching shills for the past, every day that you've been alive, every commercial, yep. every ad, any of these celebrity that's ever told you they like anything, they're getting paid for it. And that's not saying you can't have a level of dignity in it right like i've turned away multiple people tons of people i've turned away so many things turn away a lot of like weird sexual stuff where i'm like okay i'm not gonna put that on my channel stuff that i don't agree with whether it's like some Dang, i might have bought some of that stuff you know bro <laughs> <laughs> you buy all that no blake buys all that for me blake buys <laughs> yeah so i don't know I, again i don't want to put it down just to jealousy no. but it's a uh, it's a dicey one all right we're gonna transition to our next thing it's gonna be our youtube rank list oh boy and i know rich been oh, waiting for this boy. one let so. me get the computer booted up for this Literally. one we got beto back there hold everybody give a hand for beto hold down the floor let's go he's, he's clapping for himself i like that <laughs> dude he's got a great smile you can see him on the little screen right here he does have a beautiful smile all right i'm gonna fire up my my computer real quick here we go i know i'm away there we go this is good this is okay this is oh, all right guys wow. this is where we're gonna make some oh, people. let's man. Oh, ricky man. uh chris curtis let's just say a little prayer for these people because <laughs> we're gonna offend some people and these are a lot of these people are our friends these are some retro channels we have to rank them okay we're ranking and we can't no no shilling <laughs> no being like oh well he's nice and now i think we should we got it. And this is content. This isn't as a person. This isn't us rating the people because I would say I know probably 85% of these people and I, and I love most of these people. So notice I said most. <laughs> this is awesome. So we're going to rank their I'm gonna, channels. I'm gonna be the worst. We are going to rank their channels and we have to be brutally honest. And if you don't know, say I don't really know their channel. Who's ready? I'm not. <laughs> this is going to be I just, I just, I just say, saw I, a list. I was like, no. I was, I was watching regular show, you know, the cartoon yeah, yeah. regular show. And they had a whole episode on judging pies and like Rigby and. and um, such a good show. Yeah. Do you know which one I'm talking about? The episode? I think they I know it was basically about. about brutal honesty and they couldn't do it. They gave everybody tens. And they're like, you can't no, do that. We're rating <laughs> channels straight up. We're rating the channel. Look, uh, pretend we never know who these people are, but we watch their channels. That's it. All well, right, that's easy Let's do for it. me. We're gonna start with the first one. All right, all right, <laughs> Beto, hold up a, 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 your hand. A number between one and ten. Any number back there? Number one. All right, guys. First one on the docket is one of the nicest people on earth. Da, 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 da. Gerard, the completionist. <laughs> Who's going to start? Come on, Ricky. Go for it, Ricky. Rate that channel, bro. Don't be scared. I love that man too much. Don't, that is already how we're not starting. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, okay, I've never don't seen know. his okay. channel. I, so. I definitely do. Chris, do you? I've seen it, yes. Okay. So just run it through for me real quick. So S is... He, he's a... Gerard completes video games. That's what it is. Week yeah. after week after week, he completes video games. Ricky, rate that channel, bro. Dude, he's got a warrior but, beard. But too. just so I understand, S is the best. S is like god tier, bro. He is like... I mean, that beard is clearly S rank, yeah. but okay. we have to rank this That's man. warrior it's one rank, of the baby. nicest. One of the nicest men I know on this planet, and I'm not kidding. Seriously insane. Go ahead, Ricky. Come uh, on. Give us your thoughts. I'm going to say A for me. Rick, you know what, Ricky? I was actually going to go with A as well. 
yeah. because he has been dedicated to that craft since the beginning. Yeah. Completing games, not just 100%, 120%, 130%, 140%. I mean, this guy is next level. Chris, are you in... I never really watched him that that much. Ooh, I'm gonna go more. Sorry, yeah, Gerard, I'm gonna go. You suck. But I do appreciate what he has done. Yes. So I'm gonna yeah. go B. I'm okay, so B. you got beat out by Ricky and I both said A. So I'm. Uh, we're gonna go with A on this one, boys. Curtis, no, no uh, opinion. Curtis You're not in. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't. I haven't seen like maybe. Curtis 70%. was born in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> all right up next on the docket let's grab uh let, let's go oh boy all right let's go let's go retro rick bro. did he go s or did he go a oh shoot I put, i'm in the wrong spot bro hey thank you for calling see i need more people like you bro call me out <laughs> all right boys up next we're going retro rick oh, retro rick right there what do we got boys I'm who, gonna, who I'm is this <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what is what does chris want him to do Kick rocks, Kick rocks, Rick. Rick. <laughs> what you got, Curtis? I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I would say B. Okay. I would say that there's a little bit more improvement that could be done, but I mean, like, he's honestly <laughs> love it. Great. I love <laughs> it so much. What do you got, Kick Rocks, Chris? F. No. Oh, no, 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 no. No F. No F. I love Rick. I'm actually gonna put him in S. I I love Rock. Oh, so he's Blitz. like one of your favorite yeah. people. Okay. Especially you know, and things go in waves. But I see his shorts all the time. I like yeah. what he's doing with the store now. Yeah. So Ricky, well, he don't forget he just bought me and Ricky plane tickets to Arkansas last night. <laughs> That's an S. <laughs> I put him on B because he didn't uh, include me in that little. <laughs> All right, what you got, Ricky? Come on. I'm gonna go with. I'm honestly going to go with S because he reminds me of wow. us. Wow, okay. Oh, and that is that is why. It's like when I watch him, I'm like, oh, I love this one. I'm only being more critical is because I, if I'm going to comparison like that genre, I'm going to know like who's going to be on that tier. I, I was going to go B too because I know how much put I, work I put into it, and it's like a B. <laughs> <laughs> but so we're going to have to place him kind of in the middle of, of like A-ish. So an A-ish? Because you see, okay, so that, say a. that locks him in A. Yeah, we'll locks him in A. a. Yeah. So hey. that's right, he made it to A, bro. All right, nice. Retro Rick Hey, all right, guys, up next on the docket. Ready? Let's put Rick right here. Bink, 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 bink. Hey, we got two A's. Ready? Chase Ooh, up to the right Chase. price. Chase up to the right. Oh, Curtis just looked over with a weird face. I got to know now, bro. What was that face? <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Uh, I think that his videos are way too long, but I love him as a person. You do love him. Yes. I love him as a person generally. Yes. Okay. But I would say his his is more on the showing the business side of things. Okay. And and for me, I, I don't take that long of videos. Okay, so, so what are you at? Oh. Shut up and say it, bro. Chase after the right price. Starts with the letter C. Oh. Chase after the right price. Yeah. Oh, I knew he was going there. <laughs> what you got, Chris? I have not seen his channel. Okay. Ricky, I'm gonna go B because I really do like I, I do like Chase. I, like I love Chase. I would say the same thing with Curtis. I'm not as much into the reseller type stuff, but I love what he does. I love the crew. I say we lock him in there, right? We kind of put him around that BC vibe. Yes. Is he focused on reselling? Is that he's it? a collector as well, but he all he's he's very he's, smart. He's a huge yeah. collector in Pokemon. I mean, okay. nice. and that's what I kind of grew up on is Pokemon. Cards, Pokemon, uh, or games? yes, cards, games, everything, everything, man. Oh boy, so we're gonna put him in the, in the middle of BNC then. <laughs> Chase, we love you. I'm so sorry. Don't don't. There's no no being offended in here. All right, up next, ready? Let's go random. Let's go Scott the Waz. Probably the biggest blow up in gaming history in a while do you know this guy chris i do i have I, uh, yes i do but i have not watched his channel that that much <laughs> but i do know who he I've is i've seen that face before <laughs> what you got curtis i'm gonna say a tier um Kay. from the content that i watched yep. it's quality like Kay. it's where it's at Kay. you know what i mean i haven't watched enough of them to like uh, yeah, clearly I, say like yeah i'm gonna put him as i love him but i'm gonna put him between a b and an a so that's kind of because where you said too we're kind of in that spot He's great. He's great. The whole internet knows who he is at this point. But I, as much as I love his content, and you do love his content, he's re he's commented on one of our videos before. But be between a B and A, you know, a B and A right there. He wasn't a B and A. Blah, 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 blah. I just make noises when I feel bad. <laughs> yeah, I try to figure out like who all these people are, but I know most of them that you've said, so thank goodness. Yeah, he's like between the and <laughs> I don't like this game. <laughs> I just like how you're just stacking them on top of each other. On this episode of the Game Chasers, <laughs> here we go. The As they say, the the you know they call us the Disney Game Chasers, so what you thinking, Ricky? <laughs> Disney. Dang, this is, a this is like a, just because of how they, like what they did for us. Like, okay. I don't know. Okay. It's like a, it's Let's like hear it, Ricky. A, it's like a, a in between an A and a B. That's that's what it is for me right now. Okay, A and a B. I love these guys. Okay, I mean I think that they pioneered like the idea of going out there and hunting. Okay. They really did. They were so like revolutionary for their time. Yeah, 
Um, I don't think they ever really got the credit as far as like numbers of subscribers. They don't play the YouTube game. So yeah. to say, but that that's part of them, right? They're just regular dudes from Texas. They don't play the algorithm. They're not trying. They just make their content and they make it. Yeah. So. And I know Jay really well, personal friend and Me Billy too. as well. So um, I'm going to put him as an S because I like okay. I watch their channels okay. so, so, so much. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to go with A for because they have the American picker style. They do. And it's very great. I love when they oh can cut gosh. to the interviews and it just feels like a show. Yep. It's yeah. just like American picker. I am fully I with love. you guys. I'm I'm between an A and an S. I, they're, they're, they're one of the most important channels to me on YouTube. So I'm, I'm going to say we kind of said S and A's. That's kind of where we're at. So in between A and S. All right. A and S. They're, so far, so far they're, they're top dog right now. Let's just. I would consider it for sure. Okay. Game chasers between A and S. You know what? Nice. Nice. <laughs> All right, boys. Up next, they're, they're right there. They're almost in the S tier. Why is it NES Complex? Ooh. Do, 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 do. I I can jump in. Uh, I think he is one of the best YouTube channels in existence, as far as what he does. He his level of explanation. Oh God, Lord Norm, if you're listening, I love you with all my heart. <laughs> I feel like it's what Norm does, but a little spicier, a little bit better. I'm sorry, Norm. I love Norm's content on Gaming Historian, so I'm gonna put it. I'm I'm between A and S on that. If I have to give an exact, I, I'm gonna call it S. Riggy? A and S as well. Okay. Lock it in though. Just, Pick one. And then we'll dictate it after. I'm gonna go with a hard, hard A. Hard A. I haven't watched enough of them. Curtis. You gotta get mean. You gotta get angry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, honestly, I haven't seen enough content to know who he actually is. So Okay, so here's the here's the big question. Two. It's between us. Does he go above the game chasers or below? Because they're the same Ooh. level. <laughs> Rochambeau? <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, oh God, I'm, I'm going to put him, I'm going to say under just because the importance of the game chasers to starting YouTube. Like, I, I think we're going more like <laughs> entertainment than cause quality is like complex, uh, uh, complex, like, quality is okay. complex. Okay. Here in between A and S then. Uh, same, same as game chasers. We're going to go, we're going to keep them on the same level for now. Someone will come up a leader. Yeah, someone will He's come. He's gonna up. forget what his stacks are. Nobody's on the S board yet. All right, guys. Hey, we're doing the tier list right now. What about the tier god? Which is dun, 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 John Riggie's boy. That boy. That is. <laughs> he is the king of doing these type of videos. I mean, the, 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 the tier. Why are you guys laughing, bro? I love John. Oh, I love John. I John's love John. So John is one of my John. favorite humans. Yeah, he's awesome. Go ahead. What you got, bro? Just throw it out. Throw it out, bro. Just give me a letter. I'm gonna go A. I like him a lot. I okay. really do. I, I I know he's a newer channel, so I don't think he's he's not kind, that new. He's, um, he's old school. Well, newer as far as like blowing up, blowing, blowing up. up new. Okay, Got yeah. It. So I, I didn't know. Maybe he's been around a long time. I've only known of him for a few years. Okay, but I love him. I love his personality. I've met him in person at SoCal Retro Gaming Expo. Super awesome dude. Yeah, I'm gonna say A. Okay, I like I like his upbeat. A as well. I'm gonna him. say content. I have to put him at B for content. It, it, it's because my editing brain speaking. He's I've edited some of his videos, so he knows that he's well aware. So between B and A, is that where we're at? Yeah, that B and A line. Okay, B and A. John Riggs, B and A, baby. <laughs> he doesn't have to ask me because I don't know. You don't I know, know John Riggs. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Okay. Ready up next. Pat the NES punk right here. <laughs> We've had people ask us, say, "Hey, bro, you guys should get that guy in the podcast right there." Pat, Pat will be the first to tell you, bro. There's people have mixed opinions on Pat. Some people love Pat. Some people hate Pat. So Chris just nodded his head. <laughs> no, I agree with you. He, he definitely is more of a controversial figure. As far as content, I think he's done some great content. Okay. I'm not super fan of kind of like the, what's been going on lately with some of the toxic stuff in okay. the community. Got it. And stuff some like of the that. fighting. Yeah, there's okay. been a lot of, it's been, it's what I've seen is just more attacks. Got stuff it. And okay. It's people attacking him. So as well, maybe yeah. it's just him defending, defending. himself. So, but um I'd put him in the B range. B. Ricky? Part B C. Okay. B C between B C Curtis, you watch him? No. I'm with Ricky B C. I'll probably put him at C. As much as I, I I'm not gonna lie, I watched his, his live video today. <laughs> so I'm, I watched All it right. today before right out there, right before here. Put him in down and C. Sorry, Pat. We still love you, Pat. Oh boy. Who knows my retro life? Oh my god. Only you. Do you not know my retro oh, life? Yeah, because you shared it. Yeah, I've had have Ricky seen probably it. has the same sentiment I do. Dude, he will like get you emotional on these videos. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm not crying. I'm sweating out of my eyes. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say greatest channel on YouTube by a long shot. Not even remotely close to anybody else's content. 
I only watched that one video you sent, oh. and it was pretty epic. It's, it was pretty awesome. If anybody doesn't know, I mean, imagine your dad filmed everything. I'm talking, your dad was in video too, so he knew how to film. He wasn't just like, oh, here's a crappy camera. Like, he's doing nice angles, B-roll. He filmed everything of his childhood, opening presents, playing games, every moment. And Tyler, who you see in the picture, mm -hmm. got a hold of all that footage and turned it into like a Goldberg's type narrated, like fun, like documentary thing. And it's like every episode, bro, I'm like, I feel like he's my dad too. Is, is he the one that transitions his old film and then like yes. into the old, like old trim TV and then it comes to life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, Dude, that's excellent type of stuff. It was you? awesome, that video I watched. I mean, I'm going to call uh, executive and just put him above the S letter to where like it says retro channels. <laughs> I, I, I have you, bro. You just seem uh, riff full mic'd up. Like, ah. Wait, 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 wait. Right there. Ready? Metal Jesus. Ooh. Hey, everyone. Metal Jesus. I love Metal Jesus, love bro. Me Let's too. Let's go. Give us a number, bro. Give us a letter. Give us a letter. Straight up. Str a. A. Yeah. A. 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 I say between B and A. Curtis? I mean, from the, what I've watched, I would say it was a B for okay. me. So B and A. Between yeah. B and A. He yeah, just got me into so many games that I I, I have to give it. I, we're I love it. And he, he's good at editing too. He knows what he's doing. So yeah. Between B and A. All right. Up next, let's go. Oh, yes. All right. Here we go. We're gonna do this one next. <laughs> Phoenix comeback. Phoenix resale. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got here, boys? Just throw. It, just let me just hear your letter, bro. Straight up. I don't even want an explanation on him. Oh man, I love Caleb, man. <laughs> let's hear it, bro. Uh, I gotta go with B. Okay. I'll Chris? be honest. Yeah. I mean, he did an awesome video in the store. It was fun meeting him. Chris wants more promotion. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did good no, promotion you know what, in the store. You know what, though? I, you know, being a reseller, and we've talked about okay, this, true. like him coming out, making the reselling scene, and I know Rick has done this a little bit, and you guys too, but like kind of maybe he's the f one of the front runners of making that a little bit more acceptable. For sure, For sure yes. So I'm going to put him more pioneer status. So like A, B. Okay. A, a, Ricky? A, B. Yeah, probably AV as well. I'm, although I, I honestly had to think about it because his, his editing's really good. He does have one of the best <laughs> editors on there. But despite his good editing, there's a raise. <laughs> despite all his good editing, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, <laughs> who knows John Tron here? Mm. Yes, he's a he's a. I, so John Tron, I will say, is probably one of the heads of making like review content. Obviously, AVGN's on here too as well, but making it just like a fun, unique type of content that I feel like a bazillion people copied, which is great. That's a great place to be. It's like any other big creator that does something. I put him up there as an A. Yeah. Ricky? Kurt? Curtis? Curtis? Nope. Nope. He's a little much for me sometimes. Okay, so you don't B. like it. Okay. Be, I, you know? I do, but I, I don't know. The character doesn't always do Got it, it for me. If that is a character, maybe that's the way he is. I don't, I don't know. know. It's a little I, bit over the top sometimes. I don't know why, man. I laugh so much when I watch that guy. I don't know. Maybe, the, you know, like you said, certain humor lands for certain people. So he's going uh, between B and A right there. Boink. Wow. Okay. So far, my original life, leading the pack. Ooh. Ooh. Happy console gamer. One of the most pure people. Johnny's so awesome. On YouTube. So this guy, Happy Console Gamer, he, uh, he plain and simply can just sit and talk to you for an hour without anything happening. And you're like, this is great. He just <laughs> has a great talking. Um, I'm going to say for being what everyone wishes they could be on YouTube. I think everybody wishes they could just sit and talk and have people mesmerized to listen. I think for that, I give him an A. Yeah. Johnny is just, he's amazing. He's a great, great guy. What do you, you say A? I say A. Okay. I haven't watched him enough. Okay. I know I'm of him. But I'm I definitely going to have to check him. out some of these channels. I mean. Yeah, bro. We're locking in an A, bro. So he's an A. He's a solid A, which means he actually holds a pretty high spot because oh. he's a solid A. All right. We got two more. All right. Let's go. Gaming. Oh, come on. Norm. Our boy Norm. One of the most intellectual, nice people I've ever met in my life. One of the nicest the dudes so ever. Nice. I'm going to say currently... He's a full on A currently. Yeah, for me, at least an A. Okay. I mean, I love his content. I think what he's, he was a pioneer of just kind of About the gaming. The gaming. Yes. Yeah, quite literally his name, Gaming Historian. Yeah. So I would say A and knows content. I, people just love 
his yeah. content too yeah. and He's been to Retro World a ton of times. Um, this guy's always just trying to get people to do business. <laughs> Phoenix, <laughs> Caleb always comes I was to my texting, store. We're open on yeah. Beach Boulevard. <laughs> I was right. texting <laughs> Caleb this morning about coming come to you? be a guest, too. Oh, that's yeah. nice. He didn't get back to me today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say AS for me. On okay. Yeah. Wow. All right. And, and I'm, I, I'm, 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 I'm ish with you on that, too. So I'm going to put him right at A, then. He's lined up with... And now, guys, I mean... The king. <laughs> The king of YouTube retro. Chris has a very straight face right now. I'm curious. What's going through your brain with AVGN? Oh, I love AVGN. Okay. Always have. Okay. Yeah. I, in fact, if I mean, I watch his videos a ton. I feel like they've held up. I can yeah. go back and watch them. Yeah. I think he did more, obviously, for the community and just bringing attention to retro gaming in general. Huge. Than probably anybody. I think he's responsible for like 90% of people who started YouTube channels in the gaming realm like, yeah. like 10 years ago. And also, like, another, like, one of the nicest guys you will ever meet. Soft. Yeah. Soft-spoken. Not yeah, what really, you see. I know. The character just great. who he really is is, like, To crazy. be honest, some of the stuff I love more is him just talking about, like, movies when he's just chilling. Yeah. I'm like, dude, that's great. Yeah, it's just a super chill dude. I mean, I think just for who he is, it's got to be an S. Okay. A for me. I, lo I love the guy, but I... Yeah, yeah. I would, say, <laughs> I would say S as well. So I think since you said A, we both said S, he's between A and S. So let's just really quickly, before we end, boys, the most important thing right here, number one, Tyler, last place, Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. What, what about those Pixel Game Squad guys? I thought F. they were going to... F. If there's a Z, there'd be a Z. 100% <laughs> I'm going to just say A for authenticity. That's just a toilet bowl underneath. <laughs> I'm going to say F for frauds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right we're up. gonna uh transition from that's our youtube rank list now we're gonna go on to our next segment we're gonna go on to graded games is grading protecting physical media Ooh, baby, baby. i'm gonna let chris jump in with that one because chris is a uh, chris is a little bit his he's, hand more in grading than we have he's thinking comics for sure yeah uh yeah i mean i this is such a touchy subject touch it bro who <laughs> cares <laughs> yeah. who cares there, dennis bro. khan's behind the door dennis come on in <laughs> Wanna, come, come on, on in <laughs> Um, there's so many, there's several different aspects to it, of course. Myself personally, do, I grade comics, I've graded Pokemon cards. I've only ever graded one video game, which was a sealed KO. Was it and, WADA or VGA? Uh, CGC. Oh, CGC. I'm okay. a, I'm a huge CGC fan. Um, I grade them with comics. They're a trusted seller. I send all my Pokemon cards into CGC. Wow. Um, the couple of the guys that run it, uh, Matt McClellan and Joseph Ross, I know yeah. those guys from way back like too many games. Insider trading. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Easy there, Joe, Pelosi. Joe, give me the... Uh, <laughs> give me that, give no, me that but they are 8. such straight up guys. Um, so I'm a big fan of CGC. Cool. And, you know, to, to answer that question, the only video game I ever graded, um, and I have a fair amount of sealed games, was a KO... Um, for Sega CD. Sega CD. You guys familiar that's with the little bird, right? Uh, yeah, it's got like the... Or is yeah. that Calibri? No, I'm that's confused. Calibri. I My think. brain's not working. KO has kind of like the witch-looking magician kind of character on the front. Okay. K-E-I-O. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and that is a sealed copy of it. <laughs> so, no, <laughs> like, yeah, sure, let him talk. But it's a, uh, a sealed copy of it, and I was just keeping this in a bin. Like, and I have always just been afraid, especially with that, that it, like, it's just going to get a rip in it. Got it. And I was like, I want to just send this in. So when CGC started what? grading, an ice grading... cream man pulled up outside. <laughs> that was hey, an ice come cream in, man. please. <laughs> <laughs> we can use oh. it. I would love an ice cream right now, actually. All right. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so I did grade that game to, to basically protect it. Um, is the only one. And I have a couple other sealed NES games that I'm, again, they just sit in bins and I take stuff in and out of them. And I'm like, man, I do not want to like mm. tear this. I have no intention of ever opening those games. The whole yeah. like grading thing, like when it caught on, I know it was like a money and there's the whole back end of it, right? Like I never really got into like the back end of like the fraud and this and that, like it just wasn't my, my topic. So to say it wasn't something I was honestly interested in. But the only thing I spoke to with grading that I, I, that I liked is I only got like two things graded in my life. And I love having the the case for it. I felt like it just made it like, oh, like I'm a collector. Like you know, that, even though I know it doesn't. Like it's a clean display of it, right? It just felt so like, ah, this was nice. This this makes me feel like I'm doing it. But I don't know, man, about the whole the whole shady stuff that happened. I don't really follow it. Did you follow it? Yeah, I did. I mean, I'm not I don't I'm not a fan of what took place, Got to it. be honest. It did okay. seem very sketchy to me. In the boosting okay. of prices, and I totally understand that. And each of these different communities, um, uh, collecting communities, like whether you talk about games, you talk about comics, cards, 
now VHS. Okay. They all have differences of opinions on this grading. Uh, yeah. Comics and cards, very acceptable. I don't know if it was like that all the time. But why? So what is it about, and, and I don't this is just a question, like what is it about gaming that like you feel like when people grade other stuff, everyone's like, man, who cares? But with gaming, there was such a, I don't even want to say hatred, but almost. Well, one is the concept of like, well, you're. Why would you grade a game? Then you can't use it. Well, right? then, it then the topic to of that. emulation just comes back in. Like, well, if you really care to play Mario Three for the millionth time, you can probably emulate it for two dollars. Right. Not saying that's the right thing to do, but that's just whatever. And it seems to go through like phases. I feel like like grading of games when it first happened was. And it actually, it's been around for a long time. It just wasn't even people were considering it. But when it's people really, when WADA came out, people were very opposed to it, and they had differences. For why they didn't like it one being like why would you ever grade a game then you can't play it that's got it. one but it, it, that applies also to comics right then you can't read the comic to cards i mean don't aren't you supposed to like in cards you can't play with them so it applies but in co in cards comics were probably the first one where like the grading happened i actually had to go back and like look at the history of that and it was in the 80s when cgc started grading comics so it wasn't like in the 50s and 60s that they were grading comics mm. and my guess is that in the 80s when they started grading comics I would imagine there was probably a lot of collectors that were like, this is the dumbest thing ever. Yeah. Versus now, 40 it's vocal years later. It's on social media. You have a voice maybe. to argue. And I think it also just like the mark, the collecting, it kind of went through a phase of, I'm guessing that people were like, this is dumb. Why would you grade comics? And then 40 years later, now it's like very acceptable. You go to a comic show, like I was at WonderCon a couple weeks ago. Okay. And, you know, if you're going to buy an amazing fantasy 15 first appearance of Spider-Man, you want it graded. You Got want it. to know the condition of it, yeah. you know, and you would hardly even ever find that book not graded, you know? I have an interesting story, so I'm sure some people will get mad, but that's just life. Um, when the whole, like, WADA thing was going on, right, and there was this, all this hate for this company that was grading, I didn't watch any of the videos, right? I have no idea. I just know people were upset, right? Like, yeah. I know people are mad at Dennis Kahn, who's the, who's the owner, or uh, founder, owner, whatever it may be. Co-founder. Co Co-founder. I don't know the legend. Again, I didn't watch the actual videos, so... <laughs> We had a premiere for a movie event with Ricky when we went. Oh, yeah. And he was there. And he came up, and I didn't really even realize it was him. And he was like, hey, watch your show. Or I've seen your show. Like, you guys are out, whatever. And we just started chit-chatting. And this was, like, in the middle of all the WADA stuff. And I was just like, oh, cool. Like, I, I don't watch videos. I don't know. So I'm just going to treat him like anybody else. And he was, like, super nice. I'm talking, like, you know when you know when somebody's being fake, right? And oh, I was yeah. like, wow, this guy, like, when he asks you a question, he's like, Give me an answer, like a real answer. I want to hear you. I want to talk. And I, I will just say that I ended up talking with him for a long time, not even necessarily about the the stuff that happened, but more about like my brain kicked in, right? And I guess this is where my faith comes in, where I was like, okay, like I'm not going to worry so much about like wanting to know the dirty details about what happened. I'm like, I feel like me as a Christian guy, my role is to be like, Hey, but how are you? Like in everything, like, I don't really know what happened, but how are you? And the way he responded was, it was, it was pretty heart wrenching to hear the things that were happening to him being said to him, family stuff. And again, regardless of what happened, right? Like he didn't kill someone. Right. So, you know, it's not like go kill him back and he deserves to go, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. But I just remember listening to him and I was like, man, that's a really big letdown that, that, there's a way to go about some shady business. If it was, again, I don't even know. I really don't know mm -hmm. the details. I never wanted to know. But I was just like, as a person, I wanted to be like, how are you? And just hearing the response from people, I was like, that's dumb, right? Like, there's a right way to sort of pitchfork, you know, with flaming pitchforks and kill the ogre, you know, whatever it is. But I was like, man, I was like really let down for a minute, like looking around like, I can't believe talk, people talk to people. Yeah, maybe because like people don't have that type of escape, especially somebody in that position. You know, he, who does he have to talk to other than his family? Yeah. So somebody actually on the other side, not having any judgment, that was probably a really nice escape for him. Yeah. Well, let me say this is uh, before you just real quick. I want to mm. just make this clear to everybody. I still don't know. Like, right? I didn't. Yeah. I never went deep into any of that because it's not. I'm not a drama. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to know to to know him. You know, I don't meet with. Chris and go, well, before we become friends, what are the bad things that you've done? Right. Or I have you. So I didn't feel the need to vet him. So to say, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and I won't rehash the whole, what went on with them and the details and everything. Yeah. I did follow it a lot. And my take on kind of all that is that first of all, Dennis 
Khan is a pretty young guy. Yes. Like, how old would you say he is? He's got to be younger than, he at least looks younger than us. I mean, in person, he doesn't look like, you know, old people start killing him. He looks pretty good. And for a say. founder of that company, my guess, is what I think, just real quick, what I think happened is he was a young guy that was started up this business with an idea to start a grading company. He got linked up with some guys that were very, like, experienced heritage auction style like collectors that had been around since like the 80s okay and i think that he became they used kind of used him as the face mm. to and he was more of a pawn speculative that's stuff, what you think what i think okay correct this is my opinion on that because of reading really in depth what went on again there were some bigger players on the back end that kind of might have done some shady stuff okay got it my opinion hard. on it yeah um when it came to actually grading why i've never graded with wada is more of like a value thing too like I don't know that, like, in comics, there's CBCS, there's P... There's PS, PGX. P PSA, right? No, that's cards. That's cards. Uh, PGX, CBCS, and then CGC. If I have a CBCS-graded comic, I will actually crack that open and resend it into CGC. CGC wow. comics tend to have, like, 10 15% more value Got it. than a CBCS. Yeah. In the world of video games, I, m my opinion of what kind of went on with WADA, I feel that as time progresses with CGC now in it, that those might be kind of have a lower value water graded Got games it. compared to CGC. It's potentially. Hard. It's just mm. such a weird place to be in because like it like we're in this space, right? We're in the retro scene, right? So there was part of us that were like, should I be in like seeing investigating this, so to say? Yeah. But we never did, even though there's other things in the community that technically we could have been like, haha, I should check into not casting shame, but like I should check into the Amico or whatever this is because it's hot and our people like we talk about the DK, all these things like maybe I should be, but I just always been, I guess I'm very old school, traditional. I don't know what it is. I've always like my parents have always put in me like, don't treat someone a certain way unless like you for sure know that that's what's going on. Like if you've talked to them and gotten like, there's even YouTubers, right? When we first started where people are like, Hey, don't that guy suck. Dude. Don't go around that guy. Like, well, and I was like, yeah. I'll wait till I meet him myself. You know what I mean? Like, let me meet him and see, or her, and see how they are. And some of these people I met, and I'm like, great. They're, they're totally cool with me. You know, I don't need to, again, it's just so hard because we've all had, not saying I'm defending anything, right? I'm not I'm not defending anything, whatever happened at WADA, I don't know. But because, like, my brain is like, we all have pasts, so to say, or have done things, right? And it's hard because, like, Curtis, we've only known you for like a year. But I can't be like, hey, man, before we get closer, let me hear the details. <laughs> well, you gotta look at me like that, Curtis. Curtis, <laughs> what have you done? Curtis, my Curtis. Details, bro. <laughs> so, yeah. Next question, Curtis, what have you done? <laughs> what haven't I done? I think uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask is, like, how do you feel that when, like, Griff is a big guy who, like, will get something that's brand new and rip it right open? Like, how do you think that, like, people react to that all the time with you? I mean, it. some people don't like it. I mean, I don't know. I, I Again, it, it just depends what world you're in. If you want to, so to say, preserve something or hold on to it or maybe grade it or because it's sealed, you feel like it's preserving it. or you. There's just so many different categories of like, are you a player? Are you a collector? Are you this and that? I'm just an experienced type of guy. I like to experience the hunt. I like to experience having fun. I like to experience goofing around. He, he knows the amount of sealed games we've come across where i'm just like cool this is sealed got for a dollar <laughs> throw it behind me <laughs> caleb's like that he's gotten in trouble for that too <laughs> one of his videos it was my idea i should, probably shouldn't be saying that on camera <laughs> he was like this is pokemon box and he's holding it 1600 bucks he paid for it and he's like and i don't like it and he throws it behind him and lands in a trash can and that's how he started the video just to grab attention but i was like <laughs> it was just one of those things where i'm like we're gonna get slaughtered for this <laughs> <laughs> but again i don't know i never hold physical items in such a high regard that I can't, I don't know, have fun with it, so to say. And I just would do, and just overall, my opinion of the grading as well is like, I don't understand all the attacks against people that like to grade stuff. I don't like that either. If that yeah. is your thing and you want to be a, a grade your collectibles, by all means, do it. Ooh. Somebody that doesn't want to grade their collectibles, don't grade your collectibles. Exactly. It, but there seems to be this, again, that going back to that transition, <laughs> and it's different in each one where like, initially there's this attack you're so dumb it's like calling people dumb like why you would grade stuff internet, you're man. an idiot in the vhs community in particular i don't know how much you guys know about the oh, vhs boy. community and i will get slaughtered <laughs> oh, on here. those guys are so anti-grading and I they're know. so distinct like divisions in there because the people that are grading vhs are grading like blockbuster movies right alien one yep. jaws E.T., stuff like that. And the guys that are like the diehard VHS collectors are like, 
you idiots. There's nine million copies of those. Grade something rare, like yeah. some weird, obscure yeah, promo horror copy movie. Of, yeah. But that, that's just not the way it works in collectibles. However, what the so. I, I've definitely gotten I can, I'd, I've definitely gotten crap for being into VHS. Uh, it's interesting because when we first started talking about VHS, a big part of our community in our comment section was like, "Stupid! Are you guys dumb? Why are you collecting VHS?" Then, especially when we started being like, "Hey, this one's worth this. This one's worth this. This one's sell whatever." It is people just like you guys are dumb? You guys are dummies. To where people turned around and started liking it. Yeah. But now it's to the point where we found out from like a YouTube analytic thing. One of the number one things that bring people to our channel is the VHS hashtag. So now really? it went from people hating us to people coming to our channel when they search VHS and be like, sick, these people like VHS. But I think it's because of the way you guys present it. It's more of an appreciation. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you guys yeah, you guys true. really reflect back, and it's really awesome to see your face on the – It's like, Curtis's media. way of calling us old right yep. now. <laughs> yep. But hey, I remember like I, I, I was in that transition where I like – I remember my first uh, movie on VHS was – uh, Deuce Bigelow, male gigolo. Thank you, mom, out there. <laughs> wow. you know? I saw that with Ricky in theaters. <laughs> I remember that. Very odd movie for us to see together. How was that? And you're speaking uh, of your Fast and Furious wow. shirt. I remember seeing that in the theaters with you, too. Oh, yeah. And neither of us drove, and we were like walking home from the mall, like, we were running like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. We were doing that. It's not even a joke, fake story. We were dumb. All right. We're going to transition into another topic. It's uh, our collecting regrets. Um, one of the things that we don't talk about enough is when is getting rid of an item considered too early or too late? Ooh, that's oh. Mr. Speculator right there. I mean, <laughs> There's no right time. I mean, okay, we've been on YouTube for coming up on 12 years. Do you know how many videos we have to look back on and go, crap, I remember giving that to Ricky. Crap, I passed up on that. Crap, I sold, I sold that to Ricky for $2. I mean, yeah, endless amounts of stuff. It might, maybe a, It's a hard question, too, because it, it, it does bring to surface why you collect, right? Because a lot of people that do these collecting regret videos, pointing you out, whoever you are on the internet, <laughs> they'll be like, dude, I love video games. I'm all about playing games. I just like to play video games. I love them. And then they do these videos about collecting regrets. And they're like, dude, Little Samson, because it's worth a lot. And I'm like, aha, it wasn't about the game. It was about the money is why you regret it. So if we're talking, you know, game, so to say, it's like from an actual video game itself, there almost is no regret because you can pretty much play anything you want. So it almost forces you into being like, yeah, it, we're talking about value here yes you're saying um, something no just, no no are you i'm just, just breathing are you but just I'm, holding out of breath <laughs> <laughs> that, that, definitely the second one um but, but i mean another one thing is like are we holding on like holding on to things because of the potential value or for the sentimental value for me it's always the value value <laughs> <laughs> it really oh, is and my, my my biggest regrets are and i have many of them are games that i sold that like were begged and kind of almost pleaded out of me a lot of times where i'm like I look back and I'm like, man, like, um, uh, what is the game on Sega Genesis? Centurion Defender? Oh, uh, D Defender of Century. Century of Defender? Something like that. Something, I know what you're talking about. You know which one I'm talking about? Yeah. I found that game at a, a flea market probably in 2009, and I bought it for $3. And I held on to it, and at, at the time, some, one of my good friends, if he watches this, he'll know who he is. He, <laughs> I sold it to him for probably 50 bucks because he was like, dude, please sell me that. It was complete in box. The mintest copy you'll ever find. That game now is worth like two thousand plus dollars, yeah. and I and once a year, like I'll be like, dude, let me buy that back from you, and he's like, no, 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 never. Oh, and I'm yeah. just like, ah. So my rule now is just never sell, even though I sell things <laughs> all the time. How but, does your store stay open? So right, so those are my like mids, lows, I'll call them, and we yeah, sell yeah. some pretty rare items. But as rare, rare items come into the store, a lot of that's kind of what I like to collect is just the the KOs that I talked about earlier, sealed stuff think things that you're not going to see yeah and like when caleb came and it i convinced put you those to go out, go hyper grind yeah and you know what i did <laughs> L literally the next day i bought that back from him when we went to the convention because he found another copy and i was so happy to get that go go hyper grind back hey bro you're sick <laughs> bro, just never sell yeah. here's a here's a more like serious question since you guys are all kind of fathers and everything oh. are, are you holding on to things in hopes that your kids will enjoy them someday let you? ricky answer that one i like that for ricky I actually am. Uh, so a lot of like the Wii and GameCube, or not GameCube, Wii and Wii U stuff. GameCube? <laughs> the Wii and Wii U stuff, I'm holding it for my kids because that's what we played. Like, mm. like I think Gabe, when he was little, that's when I was playing Resident Evil with him right here. I was like, oh, Resident Evil. And th actually, that probably wasn't the best game to start with a little kid. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> but 
But it's like they, they they love they love the Wii U. They love the Wii. Like, dude, we that that's what we played. Actually, I guess we still play that because they they play yeah. the Switch, but not with me anymore. Yeah, I don't know if I hold on to anything for my kids because I don't, my kids are surprisingly not that into video games. My son will like pick a game and be into it, and that's it. But they're not really into games like I thought they'd be. And I don't I don't know. It's it, it's weird because we're in a video game space on the internet, but I don't play video games to the extent that most people would think like I'll pop on the super Nintendo mini and kind of pop on a few rounds of super Mario world or whatever it may be R- speed run Chippendale, uh, speed run Musha speed run little Samson. Speed run. I just want to see how long until you guys caught on to what I was saying, but they're not that into them. So I, I don't think I hold on to anything in hopes that they'll play. What about your kid? Your kid plays. I went to your house one time and heard him screaming at the top of his lungs playing Fortnite. <laughs> Gosh, just raging and smashing controllers. My, it, so I hold on to all of my stuff for my kid, kid, but I have two for um, your kid for, for my kids. No, I have two. And, um, but, uh, it's more of for like, Consider it like a retire, well, not a retirement fund for me, like an invest investment. Got fund. it. Um, you know, the stuff that I stick away has quite a bit of value. Yeah, nice. and so I keep them in bins. And to me, it's like buying stocks or something, right? Like you would buy a, have a retirement fund that's tied into stocks. I have like no retirement fund, how but I have some bins that are worth a lot of money. How would you feel if just one day something weird in the I don't know what video game market crash of nineteen eighty three or it happens all up something and just games are done. And nobody cares. What what would be your genuine emotion? I want to see. Give me a face expression right now. Of your genuine face. <laughs> it's Breaking like news. That. No one wants old games anymore. Yes. It's oh, over. No, you no, can no. retire. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> oh, my you just God. Hear the background. Be the first thing would be like, no. <laughs> but it would be like, yes, it's done. But no, actually, I wouldn't. I, I mean, I've always thought about that, that like maybe this would come to an end. Mm. Um, earlier on when I owned the stores, I was like, man, I don't know how long this is going to last. Got like. It. And I was always kind of one foot in, one foot out. I feel a lot better about it now. Like I think that the market is is a long term sustainable uh, st- it, it, plan. Yeah, um, a lot of it just ties into the characters, like Mario yeah. and Zelda. It's similar to like a Spider Man, a Superman, a Batman. Yeah. Like these these characters to me are going to live through generations. I think so. I don't think it's going anywhere. W- were you going to say something? You know what's weird though? I I did the same thing with with my kids stuff. I'll keep all their stuff and just put it in. That's probably half my stuff too. So, like, <laughs> I got a bunch of vintage Legos that Gabe just he's like, God, I don't mm. want to be. I see it in the trash, so I pick it out. <laughs> <laughs> it, he threw it in the trash, oh, so I'll pick it out and I'll sick. put it away for him. But look, look, look check this out. This was this was no, this was when he was like five years old. <laughs> come on, honey, Nicole, Ricky's wife, come, come on, on in. Intervention <laughs> number two. He, he was like five when when he was throwing it away. Like he was dude, big giant Legos, and my mom would buy them. And and he found the the crate. He's like, Dad. Who's are those? I'm like, bro, those are the ones you threw away. They're mine now. He's like, dude, are you serious? Like, those are mine. I'm like, yeah, you can have them, bro. But I'm like, I'm like, I'm keeping them for you, but don't do anything dumb. I'm like, this yeah. is for you, but they're like hundreds of dollars now. Yeah. So I'm like, this is awesome. I'm like, <laughs> I think I, they will last the test of time. Be, like, like you said too, because it's like, will it die? Will it die? But like us all being American Pickers fans, like we'll watch it and be like, there's stuff that they're p- picking from the twenties and the thirties and this and that, the 1800s pawn stars, you watch it. People are collecting anything that has any sort of – at some point, it almost doesn't even have to be special. Right now, we're in a, a unique time with games because it's special to us, right? We grew up with it, so to say. But there's people that are collecting things from whatever World War One era who weren't alive at that time. It just is a collector's thing at this point. And I think like you're saying, it's not only going to be about people who are just gamers or grew up collectors. They're at some point – just at some point in the future, they look at it and go, that's sweet. That's something I want to collect. Yeah, like Batman and Superman came out in the 1930s. Wow. And like they have that. stood the test. Christian Bale the was the first one, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 1932. That Dark Knight in 1932 was <laughs> very awesome. dark night. It was all black and white. <laughs> black and white night. But Man, he I looks mean, great for that age. Night. <laughs> but the comics to me are always like the blue chips of collectibles. Like I look a lot at like the history of what's going on with that and compare that to like these other much newer, like VHS collecting, somebody's going to kill me and be like, well, I've been collecting VHS since yeah. 1983, yeah. but it's just come around to more mainstream. Yeah. Um, and so video games to me, yeah, have a long sustainability. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and think- just with sentimental stuff, just to go to that, like the toys that my son has are another thing that, like, that's a different type of thing that I set aside. He played with Marvel Legends figures. Mm. Yeah. And so those I will keep for him maybe someday when he's, you know, in a, a man – 
He yeah. can look back and be like, dang, How old dad, is he? you ca- he's 13 now. Oh, oh. only a year older than my son. Yeah. Yes, mm. Chris, what you got, bro? I think the biggest thing that we haven't answered yet, Uh-oh. what was your biggest collecting like regret to get rid of? Like, What did you get rid of that you regret the uh, most? I said mine. And I, admit it. Just get out there with it. I'll, I'll, I'll say it right now. Uh, it was actually half mine, half riffs. I, I didn't know he was selling it until like like the, the day of. He's like, hey, bro, we're selling this uh, game, your, our GameCube kiosk to Jared. And I was like, what? Oh, yeah. And and I, dude, I, for to me, I, I never wanted to sell it. But whoops. <laughs> I thought you were gonna, gonna, but I dude, thought we, you were going to say this virtual boy shirt at first. <laughs> <laughs> no, because we, dude, we, we got that. We got that stand for 50 bucks. 50 bucks. We, we each paid 25 bucks. So we split it. And then it was at my house for the longest time. And uh, Jer, Jer comes over with his brother. And they're like, buddy. yeah, we're selling it. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, we're selling it for, dude, it's a great deal. 200 bucks. I was 300, like, Ricky. It was 300. <laughs> was it three? I'm pretty sure it was 200. <laughs> Maybe it was two. <laughs> it was 200. And I was like, dude, I was like, I would have just paid the whole, I would have paid my half off just for that. But I was, in, in my bucks. head, like, that's how, that's how I saw it. I was like, oh my gosh, the GameCube kiosk has got, I mean, my wife was like, she was so happy, but I was, uh, I was just like, oh man, see that how thing was. B- how about you, Riff? How, how about you? I don't have any. I, I like again. I, I traded Little Samson for a scooper scope when I was a kid, but I am a very. I, I just like story, bro. Idiot. I don't care. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm very much like I can get it again. I'll find it again. I'll hunt again. I'll figure. I don't know. I'm so much more about the hunt. I just don't. The things I, I like that feeling of getting them, documenting it, and then being like. All right, next item. Even though they mean things to me, they totally mean half of this. I can tear up about half of the stuff that I talk about, you know? But yeah, and it's, I agree with you 100% on that. It's not the things that I care about, like that Defender of Century I didn't care about. It's the value that I'm like, <laughs> what the heck? Why did I do oh, that? Oh, man. Right. And I'm not going to answer mine until later on in some time life. But, you know, uh, we're going to transition into like a tr- nice little controversial topic. Ooh, new topic. All right, here we go. New topic. This is me giving myself a hand. <laughs> All right, fanboyism. <laughs> Does fanboyism destroy the things we love, like gaming, movies, and our entertainment? Mm. There's so many pros and cons to fan. I mean, I'll give the quickest example ever. Let's say movies, right? Take movies. Uh, a Star Wars comes out, right? And that's that's pretty accurate, right? To recent time. Or let's okay, I'll give two examples: Star Wars and Sonic the Hedgehog. Star Wars. There's fanboyism that can be a great thing and right, kind of like help steer the direction of the producers, this and that, whether you agree with the way they're going or not. And it can, it can dictate which way they go. It could be a good thing or a bad thing. I think one of the only examples I can think of recently were fanboyism, which can sound bad was like the Sonic movie. But I think we can all agree that the fanboyism kind of worked out in this case. And that was Sonic look like freaking Ricky like coming out of the shower, bro. <laughs> That's exactly and, what we like. And they redid it. <laughs> I got that image in my head now. Great. <laughs> I was, it was a delay. <laughs> oh, I almost said something so offensive. Um, but yeah, in that case, right, the fanboyism, people went crazy. They cried about it, fought about it. And we, in all cases of the matter, I think 90% of people agree we got a better look in Sonic, right? Yeah. But there's also things where it's like, fanboyism can become toxic to where it's like, oh my gosh, shut up, so to say. But a lot of it can be val- uh, validated validated in fanboyism and, and critiques towards games or movies. Now, can you explain to them like what an actual fanboy is? Like- I mean, a fanboy is somebody who's, they're not only, they can be someone who's obsessed with something, right? That that's their thing. They know everything about this. This is their thing. They love it. They'll, they'll, they have tattoos of it. It's their, their diehard. I know everything about this. I'm dedicated to it. And that's the king, right? It's almost like when, uh, so, uh, the new PS5 was coming out versus Series X. Ooh. Go through the comment section of that. <laughs> that is the definition of toxic fanboyism, right? There's good fanboyism. Us, you're wearing all virtual boy. You're fanboying over it. You love it. Woo! <laughs> semi healthy, <laughs> semi unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> but but there's also the conversations of it to being completely the opposite. You know what I mean? I, I agree. I think it's because. <laughs> I'm trying to think what I actually fanboy about. The, the last thing I think I fanboyed about was like I had read um, uh, with the new Marvel movies that came out. Got like it. The, the, I had read the uh, Infinity Gauntlet Got series, it. which was the six part series of it. So when the movies came out, right, I'm sitting there critiquing every little thing about it. Like 
nope, that didn't happen, that didn't happen. Where's Adam Warlock? Never in it, main character. And so it kind of ruined it for me, too. And I think it ruined it for, like, my son and my wife who I'm with watching it. Because I'm like, they're like, that was awesome. I'm like, no, it wasn't. Yeah. They didn't do all this, 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 this. Meanwhile, it is a really awesome movie. So I just critiqued it to death. But it's hard because you, you're you not, like, a, you're being a toxic fanboy, so to say, about it. You're just looking at the source material of what you love, so to say. But it can take away the enjoyment, knowing too much. Yeah, like Star Wars, I didn't read a lot of the Star Wars, Star Wars stuff or any of the books or fanboy about it. So when he's the movies a come out... He's a Trekkie. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Trekkie. So Look at him. <laughs> love Star Trek. Well, Picard. Well, like, awesome. I, the speaking to when this is being recorded, Mario, the Mario movie has been out for one day. I see it tomorrow. Nobody's safe if they've seen anything. But it's like... I'm sure there's people out there who are nitpicking. I haven't looked at any reviews. Probably, I guarantee it. Someone's nitpicking out. They're like, well, that's not technically Mario's mustache is one diameter smaller. And it's like, <laughs> I guarantee you it's out there. I guarantee, And I guarantee you it could be good ways or bad ways, but there has to be. Fanboy is just such a weird question, you know, because it's like there's so many rights and there's so many wrongs in it, you know? Yeah. I don't know. All right, we're going to transition to our next topic of uh, the current status of California weather. Whoa, the cur Curtis, how did we get here? I'm going to tell you right now, we can't, we can't always talk about our... Uh, Weatherman Curtis. Yes, sir. Weatherman. Here, and we're here with Dallas Rains. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I mean, like, how has the weather, um, as of the beginning of this year, affected the ability for you to go hunting? Got it. So you're talking about weather within our... our what uh, we uh, with our Within our uh, own area. Really? Yeah, I mean, it can affect drastically. You talking about all the rain recently? All what right. did our brains? All right, so I, this is more for people that didn't grow up. Like, I feel like mo a lot of people that are here didn't grow up here, so they don't know what it's like. They're like, "Oh, water!" I'm like, "Bro, this comes in cycles every ten years. It's like it's not new for us unless you've only been here for so long." But it's actually not that uncommon. We had El Nino for the longest time. That's what Ricky's nickname is. <laughs> that is El true. Nino. I mean, what are you doing to actively like keep up with your content? Uh, that's the hard thing, you know, as game hunters and collectors, the weather can be crucial, which is why I think we're one of the longer standing channels out there in what we do, because we have the ability to game hunt so often. And I get demotivated so quickly by the rain. And I know that makes me a wuss because everyone else is like, put on a weather jacket, put on this. <laughs> but I lose like my energy, even when it's raining to film something in the house. I'm like, I don't want to go film this. Yeah. And it affected me with my stores a little bit too. Like I have stores on the East Coast where in Connecticut where it rains all the time. So I grew up with the rain and um, it doesn't slow the stores down there. I think just cause we were so used interesting. to it. But here in, in Southern California where we don't see as much rain, even though you're saying we do, but maybe it's every 10 years, people tend to stay inside. Like yes. if it's raining out, they're not doing anything. So it slows down retail. It slows down everything. California is a funny place because weather, like typically when it rains down here in California, you get every Starbucks girl like, oh my gosh, sparkle lattes. And they're taking the pictures, the selfies. And then two <laughs> days later of the rain, they're like, get this effing rain out of here. Please. <laughs> like I can't stand this. <laughs> so a funny thing. It was like driving down here on PCH. Um, and it must have been like a church or something yeah. that had a sign, and it said, bring the drought back or something, or praying for the <laughs> drought back, something like that. It was pretty funny. Yeah, the weather, it's interesting, too, because I, I, I mean, my most recent thing, my game shed, right? I had a game room. It was in a shed. It, we didn't have proper drainage back there. It didn't matter at that time because for however long it's been there, 11 years. It was like a lawnmower back there. For didn't the do anything, time. man. And then it rains down here, and it floods my game room, and there goes all my stuff, and I'm, I'm – it's funny because now I'm like I, – I feel like I have like a rival. Like I don't hate many people or things, but I feel like I hate the rain right now, and I'm like angry with it. <laughs> when it comes back, I'll like curse the skies. And I'm like, no, don't you dare, you son of – I'm like mad. I mean it's a, re a real – ask my wife. I get like mad. I'll see it coming. And I'm like, dude, stop. You're not coming back. Like I'm just <laughs> angry at this point about it. But it affects us. But when I go to other states to game hunt, yeah, a lot of times they're just like, yeah, it's a little bit of water. I'm like, I don't know if a little bit of water isn't just a little bit of water when we're talking about a CD-based console, and they're just like, eh, it's fine. I'm like, I don't know. No. Are we still planning on making it bigger, the shed? Um, Yeah, I say we make that game room bigger. I think I'm going to knock it down. I might just make it into a house. That's kind of where I'm at mentally. Dang. So, game, you know. Game shed to house. Go big or go home, bro. <laughs> you All know? Right. All right. Well, now I'm just going to transition to something a little bit uh, different little again. Bit. It's going to be a little bit more about kind of on the sports side, but extreme sports. Um, You guys have seen that new 1080 uh, board that was listed on eBay? Um, and Riff hates the snow. Let's just say that. I'm gonna pull that um, up while you guys talk. <laughs> have you? Uh, do you prefer 
skateboarding over snowboarding? So we're talking like sports right here, bro. Straight up 90. Oh, we got to talk surf, skate, yeah. snow. I'm going to be real with yeah, everybody so in the world right it. now. Other sports don't exist. <laughs> surf, space, skate, or snow is where it's at. Hey, hey, don't you throw uh, hate on my MMA, okay? That's like one of my favorites. <laughs> All right, I'm with you on that. And Brixton's in, in so you know that. <laughs> I'm a big football fan. I love football. Yeah, we're not talking about, you know, pad on pad here, man. We're talking about that good old sliding on some snow or some rolly blades, you know? <laughs> I mean, I sounded terrible right there, but it's okay, you know? So we're talking about board sports then. Yeah, as, as Riff's pulling this up for any of the viewers at home. Ricky's got to find it. Ricky found it earlier. All right, let's talk, let's talk 90s, bro. We're talking 90s right here. This is where the segment starts right here. Ready? Yeah, yeah. 90s sports. The real true 90s legends in my brain are freaking surf stuff, skate stuff, snowboard. That, to me, it, it screams 90s. When I think, like, 90s and people are, like, radical, tubular, I don't picture people playing baseball. Even though it's part of, I get it, field of, Oh, he's disagreeing. I was going to just throw in basketball 90s was pretty incredible, man. Michael Jordan? <laughs> yeah, Michael Jordan. I don't know. When I, I saw a video of, like, uh, Shaquille O'Neal playing against Michael Jordan, they had the warm-ups with, like, the way they looked in the 90s style. That was pretty 90s. Yeah, too. I was in diapers. So Not okay. to disagree with you, because I'm a big <laughs> snowboarder, and I like that stuff, too, but... Okay, which, which sport do you think defines the 90s the best? Ooh. Pro, to me, basketball. Basketball? Easily basketball. Okay. I guess it's just, just a, a, a um, it just depends how you grew up then, yep. right? Oh. For me, basketball was there, but it was pretty not really existent. For me, it would be baseball just because I played what baseball. What a dork. But, <laughs> Terrible. But, you know, that's why I kind of try to narrow it down because Couldn't of the hobbies they... that we do collect are within that realm of like our style. Yeah. It's like skateboarding, snowboarding. I, I find that. skateboarding to be... Ever, it, it just feel like anytime. Or put it this way: Here you go. Here's why I'm going to defend skateboarding as the definitive '90s sport. If I told you draw a '90s guy, you're very much more likely to have someone draw you a guy with like a mohawk, like crazy clothes with like a skateboard on him. They're not going to be drawing some '90. When you think that they're not going to be drawing a guy with a basketball or a baseball, take that. Eat those words. Smell them. Who was the big star in baseball? Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan? Dude, in I the was 90s? in diapers. In the <laughs> Come on. Watch. Curtis is still in diapers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Curtis yeah. didn't even watch it. Yeah, you don't see my like, uh, my prescription. Like, I just had a baseball when I was in my crib. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky still can't find that snowboard. I think we... Dude, I, I, had, I had those little, little Depends, dog. I was just going like those grown adult diapers, whipping them around. The reason Curtis brought it up is Ricky pulled out a... a, a Recur we found a 1080 snowboard from... The the freaking nineties. What were from they the asking day. on it? They four, were asking like four, four grand or something on it. Ten? That thing it's actually was, at six grand now. Is it really? I think they they raised it. it. Son of it's a pretty guns. awesome that thing. Yeah, I think not the, gonna lie. I think you it was it on a couple of like, the Damn. ads that were actually in some of the Nintendo powers. I believe it was. It was. And that's why it's so. Crazy. I feel like there was like one guy that got that thing. There, that's the only one I've seen. Well, yeah. Ricky can't even find it now. We found it like an hour ago. But I'm gonna say the biggest legend. All right, here's here's gonna be the funny 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 thing people are getting mad about. Tony Hawk, man. I love the guy. I love, he's a fun guy. He can still push out a 900. But growing up skateboarding, growing up skateboarding, Tony Hawk was the part you skipped. And that was like very – oh, there's the board too, by the way. Tony Hawk was the part you skipped as a skateboarder. As a street skater with my boys and our jinkos going hard, getting wild, screaming, vert parts came on, you skipped it. So it was very interesting to me, and I didn't really think about it until now, but like when Tony Hawk Pro Skater came out – the game was great, but there was almost, I don't know of anybody who picked Tony Hawk. And I love Tony Hawk. I'm telling you, hundreds of skateboarders I hung out with, all these crews. We grew up with the Huntington crew. We grew up in Orange County, California, where all the biggest dogs of skateboarding was. Vert stuff was like, he was kind of a dork. And it was just kind of the thing. Guy's wearing a helmet. <laughs> what a dork. I'm going to, I'm going to, this is another bad. We had a guy, <laughs> Lord forgive me. This time has passed. <laughs> Before I say this story, we were like the hardcore skaters at school. Like that, that was our thing. Like we were the skate, skate dudes, like at the table, the hardcore skate guys. We had this kid and I, I guarantee you it took him like a year to muster up the courage to like sit at our table. Lord, forgive me. I probably didn't say it. And I just remember <laughs> him walking up with a skateboard with a helmet on. Lord, forgive me. And I, we all looked at him and we we're just like, get out of here, you dork. Was his name Ricky? Ricky. <laughs> I feel horrible about it now, man. I, I, Ian, Poor Ricky. Ian, if you're out there, I won't so say sorry. your last name. I'm so sorry. I'm not that man that I used to be. Uh, it, it was just, it was just such an interesting thing, man. But yeah, there's, there's that snowboard. I mean, for the audience that wants to see that thing, six thousand bucks. But there's no, there's no bids on it. 
But you're never going to see something like that. No, no, you will not see that. That's got to be probably the only Scroll one those in pictures, the existence Ricky. of that. And I, I, I'm a snowboarder, so I love that thing. Like, I would actually use that. Oh, look, there you I go. Think, I think the person that, like, I look up to as, like, the pinnacle of snowboarding is still Sean White. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. I mean, and he was able to transition in X Games. So give me this with Sean White. I was not a snowboarding guy. Was he in the realm of Tony Hawk? Like he was just a face, or he had those skill that everyone's like, oh, holy cow, skill, big time. Olympian gold medalist. He's everything that you could like think of in the that sport. Like he was changing everything. He like you know how. uh, Sorry to interrupt you, but like how Tony Hawk like created the yes. The 720? Was it the 900? Well, I wouldn't say creative. He was one of the first guys. Basically, to the Sean yeah. White was on that mark of creating new Historical. things. Historical. Yes. Got it. Okay. In fact, I couldn't even really name any other snowboarder. Palmer. Besides. He was big in the 90s. Oh, Sean Palmer. Palmer. Sean Palmer. Sean Palmer. I think he had a, skate- a game. He, he had, had a game? bunch of games. Greatest snowboarding game. I'm Snowboard. gonna say Sean Snowboard White kids. for me. Snowboard, Snowboard kids. kids is pretty good. Yeah, we were. Yeah. I was playing that recently. All right, this it's is pretty awesome. This, for me, when you get that that board, but, but it didn't really work that well. But you were still trying. <laughs> All right, you guys got to <laughs> rapid fire these. Oh, I'm gonna name sports, and you have to name the greatest important player to that sport. But you don't get time to think about it. No. Ready? And we just go like this: basketball. I'm Michael Jordan. Oh, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, dude. Michael Jordan. Okay. Baseball. Oh no! Uh, Hurry up, bro. Uh, P Rose. Derek Jeter. Mark McGuire. All I can think of is Mike Piazza for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> because it comes out now, Mike Piazza. <laughs> <laughs> Hockey. Uh, I'm going to say Andre Kop- Kopitar just because I love him. Okay. Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky. Okay. Snowboarding. You said Sean, Sean White. White. Sean White. I'm going to go with uh, the freaking snowboard kids. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Skateboarding. I love Nigel Houston. Nigel. Okay. Tony Hawk. I'm not a big skateboarder. I know. So that's like the only one I could probably name. You you just said like Starbucks is the greatest coffee. I was that little kid that came up to the lunch table. (laughs) (laughs) Am I dumb or was Buddy uh, Lassick? Bucky Lassick. Bucky Bucky Lassick. He was the one who did the crazy. He was also vert. Yes. And like I just remember him because he would always like outshine everybody in the X Games. I'm going to say as much as he was polarized, Chad Muska. He was a, a, he was local to a lot of the stuff we're doing, and I feel like he really set a scene. He he became the first celebrity before Rob Deerdick too. That's true. He was I mean all his pictures like hanging out with like Paris Hilton, all these people. He's just he was the life of the game. I love Rob. You, Deerdick, you did dude. love Muska. Deerdick I remember all awesome. the Muska stuff you had. Do you remember how I used to dress, bro? Yeah, it was pretty funny, dude. I was <laughs> Jinkos, bro. If you could see my shoes, I wouldn't rock them. You wore Jinkos? Oh, I was hardcore Jinkos. Wow. I was heavy Jinko, bro. Really? I was I was a, a different looking kid. I was a different kid, man. Dude, I used to cuss a lot and stuff. <sighs> What's changed? You found, Je- you found Jesus? <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> the Lord really? Jankos? I would never have guessed that. Oh, dude. Hardcore Jankos. Buzzed head. Yeah. Super short hair. Had a mouth on me. Just a different <laughs> Buzzed kid. Buzzed head. Man. Shaved head. Yeah. Super short hair when it would come in. Lucky. Trying I had a picture bowl this. hair. You had a bowl. You would have a bowl cut. Yeah, my you mom. Would. I had a bowl cut, too. You I white guys. Cut. <laughs> I wanted Generic my dad's white mullet, guy man. Haircut. My dad had a great mullet, man. I wish I had that. Uh, nope, great. let's just put a bowl. <laughs> How about you, Ricky? The tie between Rodney Mullen and uh, Jamie Thomas. Ooh, Rodney Mullen. Rodney have you guys ever seen do someone like... I mean, I think he said that when he wanted to start skateboarding. It was like he wanted to be dancing on a skateboard. And... That's kind of what he did. That's what he does. It's Dancing insane. Queen. Is that it, Curtis? He Are we out of here? Uh, no, I was going to ask. Have you guys ever broken any bones? <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. Hey, I have I've one never. right now. Hey, I have I... two broken bones right now. I have a broken thumb. This thing, I can't move. It's healing. And I have a broken rib from snowboarding. I've only just, just like a month yeah. ago. That's it. From mm-hmm. skateboarding, yeah. Uh, lots. The same ankle three times. I've only broken one bone, and it was at his house on the half pipe. Oh, <laughs> oh my! I gotta tell the story, bro. We, we built, we built, we built a half pipe. We built a half pipe in my backyard, and I was like my dream. It was only like eight years ago. Maybe? Yeah, it wasn't even that long. Built ago. a half pipe. It was my dream, bro. To have, I was like, I have money now. I can build a freaking half pipe. I want to. I'm gonna build a half pipe, and I would skate this thing every day. And my buddy Andy decided to build one too. Uh, about a weekend, he broke his pelvis. He's about our age, and I was like, oh shoot, one down. And then Ricky and I would skate. Ricky isn't like he wasn't like as heavily dedicated to skateboarding as I was, and. What Ricky's over and he's just dropping in, doing some, you know, rock and rolls, just some basic turns and stuff. And I'm like, all right, Ricky, like, I'll be right back. I'm going to go to, I was with my, my, my cousin, Mike as well too. And I'm like, all right, Ricky, Mike, I'll be right back. I'm going to go in the house, grab a drink. And I'm probably like one step into the door and I hear Aaron, 
Aaron, come back. <laughs> and I look outside and I see Ricky laying down with his foot up like this. But I'm like, that's not right. His foot was down here dangling like this way, like this. And I'm like, oh, oh no, no, that can't be right. And I and I run to Ricky and I'm like, oh, no, this isn't good. This is not good. I know how I was. That was during that that partial time in our life where Ricky's wife loved me but also wanted to kill me because we were like <laughs> such close friends. We we're doing everything together. And I look at Ricky and I'm like, what do I do? And he just looks at me. He's like, Nicole's going to kill me. I'm dead. I it's, it's like Ricky didn't have pain from his foot. How old were you? 30. Oh, this happened recently. He so needs much. some milk. Oh, this is not like a young kid. <laughs> oh, no, no, dude. We wow, went, I went so long it, without huh? breaking anything. And that's why I felt okay. Fun fact the I finally got like, I, I broke it when we finally, <laughs> the day I got a helmet and pads. Told I'm you, like, bro. Oh, I better be careful. They're not, they have superpowers to make it worse. <laughs> bro, it made it worse. Oh I was like, oh, no. Yeah, it was, uh, it was one of those situations where I was like, Oh crap! And it was it was bad. It still it still is pretty bad. Oh dude, it, it, if you look at my feet right now, one ankle's like huge, and the other one's still like a skinny little. Curtis has two huge ankles, but it's just... <laughs> those are just hey, cankle gang baby. <laughs> dude, I, I felt bad for him and Mike. They had to carry me to the car. Yeah, and, and it's funny. See, this is I'm glad I got a social media because I'm I'm carrying Ricky to the car. I'm like, oh no, Ricky! Throw him in the back of the jeep, and the first thing I do. Ricky, take a selfie for the show, bro. Hey, <laughs> like, ah! And Ricky's just like, yeah. It was it was a bad time, bro. How long uh, did it take to heal? It's, oh, it's barely healed, bro. Four it's months, still, five four months. 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 Like, yeah. This, I mean, this broken rib that I got like a month ago. Oh my gosh, still killing me. <laughs> Takes oh, forever. Yeah. yeah. The older you get, have you ever broken a rib too? No. Yep, on yeah. camera. Oh. oh yeah, <laughs> I broke my rib on on the channel. Oh, I think you told me that, but tell it again. Yeah, what we happened? were basically playing around and. Ricky and I were this. This sounds <laughs> the fragility of very this homoerotic. Group. Ricky and I were literally playing in bubbles oh, together at a convention. <laughs> yeah, I know. We were playing with bubbles, and I'm like goobing the Ricky. And there's a longer, deep story to it. Like he lost his watch, and I apparently knocked it out of his hand or something. We're not really sure. But long story short, I'm standing next to this meter pedestal. It's like a metal box, right? And they're harsh edge. I mean, they're like harsh edge metal. I mean, I work on those things at work. And whoa, almost fell. And Ricky is goofing around with me, and he goes. Ricky goes to put bubbles in my face and the camera was rolling and everyone knows when the camera's rolling, you're just a little extra. So I was like, <laughs> I'm just not going to dive out of the way. I'm going to like dive out of the way. <laughs> so when Ricky goes to put the bubbles in my face, I'm like, ah! and I jump the other way as hard as I've ever jumped. Like a, like a linebacker or like a football touchdown play dive for all the games. And I dive and I realize the box is this far from me and it just, Kaboom! Right into my rib. I mean, as hard oh, as you man. could do it, and I and knocked the breath out of me. And I was on camera, so I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I went and got it taken care of. And looking at the doctors, like you broke your rib, and how, how'd you how'd you break your rib? I'm like playing in bubbles <laughs> with my friend Ricky, and he's like, what? And I'm like, no explanation to, needed. To be fair, it was like it, there was so many bubbles you could barely see. Like it was. It was a mega bubble bath. <laughs> wow. I was picturing all of that. I don't know if I believe this how, whole story. How did it make you feel? <laughs> it does make, sound made up, though. It does sound made up. Yeah, I was made like, up. this sounds like a cover-up. What right. really happened? Wait, pause. Oh. I'm going to pause. Beto, do we have 10 more minutes or do we not? Yes? Yes. Okay, last one. Uh, all right. I mean, last wait, wait, one, I'd, I'd rather let, let Chris, it Chris, wait. Pop in and do it right. Go. All right, we're going to transition to the next topic, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be one more garnered to you guys. It's for, like, networking. Oh. Now, uh, what is some advice that you can supply someone who's getting into, like, the reselling or even content? Ricky? Reselling? Oh. Yeah. Wow, this is hard. Yeah. It's not. Con it's freaking talking to people at Swami. It's oh, that's true. Taught relationships is every game hunting tip video you've ever watched in your life at this point. <laughs> Don't even need to watch. We've put them out. Delete those videos. <laughs> it's all about connections at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, the stuff we've gotten from following other rules, right? Like there's other things you can do to help and there's things you can do to get better stuff and, you know, get there early, do this. Yes, those things are all valid, but we've never gotten better stuff and had better success than by making the right connections and talking to people. And I think we were one of the first people on YouTube that when everybody was hating on resellers, we were kind of like, who cares? Like we kind of... Talk yeah. to Lewis and these guys and these resellers. Like, let's be friends with them. And we started being like, instead of hating on resellers, we weren't resellers. It took us like nine years to start reselling stuff. <laughs> yeah. But we were like, let's be cool with them. And lo and behold, these are where all of our best stuff comes from. Because those guys 
are the guys that are sourcing. They're going to storage lockers. They're doing this. We didn't have time for that. They're bringing us that stuff yeah. because we made cool with them. And they're like, hey, you're not like the other YouTubers, so to say, at that time. Yeah, and I think what was crazy before you go into your business side of it is mm-hmm. actually our friendship was kind of based on that. Yes. Remember? Because I, I, I approached you guys. I was like, hey, I got this. And you yeah. were like all in for it. But it wasn't just for the the just like bringing you in on it. It was more of like, can you create something where it's like it creates history? Yes. Because yeah, I you know came in your, with that idea. Because I knew your reach and I knew that like you wanted to like just show your community and I was all for it. Yep. I was just kind of getting into your like YouTube watching and yeah. all that You stuff. weren't even like a fan when you came in. You were just kind of like, eh, I've seen you guys on YouTube. You guys are cool. It's like, I was like, nerds. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Curtis but. came in thinking he was real cool. He was like, I liked baseball in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that, that, was his, that was his flex. Now, uh, to go back to my first question, Chris, like how do you think you would approach like going into like a business transaction with somebody you don't know? Can I, is that a different you can, question? No, no, you can, Go, just, you, you can elaborate on any question. Bro, I want to elaborate hey, bro, on that this is, one hey, real quick. This is you can, America. <laughs> you can talk me down any You day. do what well, you want. <laughs> I just wanted to say, because it's not as easy, like going back to the other question, which was right. like, what would you say to somebody new getting into reselling? Right, right. Right. I think what I would say to somebody is like, st- uh, stay ahead of markets, mm. if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. In other words, like, there's always something new and collectible, even right now that we don't know is For new sure. and collectible that we pass up on all the time. And if you start, like, it's kind of a, like, VHS was one. Yes. Like, years ago, like, uh, I we started buying VHS. Too. I used to go to the flea markets, and you could get VHS everywhere for a quarter mm-hmm. a piece. Yep. And every vendor was like, oh, my God, why are you buying this stuff? And it was it was not that I had, like, some intuition that I was like, man, VHS is going to blow up. It was just from knowing that, like, wow, I'm meeting a few people that were like, yeah, I collect VHS. And I was like, really? You collect VHS? What do you like to collect? And they're like, oh, I like all the horror tapes. So long before it was like a lot of people doing, I was like, you know what? I'll go and I'll start buying horror tapes. It mm. seems like people like that. Mm. So yeah. that's kind of how you catch wind of it. I mean, one of the newer ones we've talked about, which I've kind of, I don't know if it'll ever take off, but I've been like, you know, audio CDs, like rap music for like, like old rap music, like Dr. Dre or like early oh, no, Eminem stuff. Even the tapes. Yeah, like, like <laughs> yeah. we go to the flea market and what do you see them for? Buck, like everybody's like, oh, CDs, yeah. but like. I've been taking home bags and bags full of CDs, CDs? recently, <laughs> pumping up the market. It's, it's, this it, is how I pump it up. It is interesting you say that because I feel like everything goes through that, right? Like that critique period of that's dumb, right? And we talked about it with VHS, video game clothing, stuff like that. There's always that period where people are very critical of it. And it, and it makes sense to be critical of it because in that moment, it really is garbage. It sounds stupid. Like yeah. real, like I'll be honest with you with CDs right now, you're probably ahead in my brain. I'm like, I don't look through CDs, bro, but you might be right to where that's the thing. But why do you buy them if you're not going to play them? I do. <laughs> I do. I listen to CDs all the time. True, I'm not going to lie. I actually audiophile. do. Do you really? I do. I listen to CDs. Who's your go-to? Who's your go-to CDs? I like like new metal stuff like corn tool. Really? No, uh, I didn't say rage. what you are. I said, what do you listen to? <laughs> rage Against the Machine. But I like a lot of rap, too. Okay. I like New Age rap. Who's your favorite rapper? I mean... Um, Come on, bro. I'm a big... Uh, I knew it. J. Man, Cole. There's I knew so it. many. No, not J. Cole. <laughs> um, Just got to get him into it. Look at this guy. He doesn't even have it. You're not a real... He's trying to, in his brain, have someone Google search <laughs> rap artists. How do you not have like a tier list already built into your head for I, 1 through 10? I, I like, have like, like a rap playlist on my head. No, you know, what what I, you know who like, I like a lot? Like, I'm a big Tupac fan. Like, I was oh, yeah. Tupac. Tupac. I mean, there there were so many rappers, rappers I had to Tupac Shaker? I was going to say like Tupac, Ice Cube, Bone Thugs. Bone Thugs, for some reason, always like... Bone Thugs are one of you hear that coming up? I actually like Warren G a lot, too. Warren G's yeah. great. I like Jay-Z but, back in the day. So when you were at the flea markets, like if you find a Tupac CD right now, I guarantee you that that CD is probably worth 20, 25 bucks. I don't pick it up. I'll be honest with you. But you're not even probably even looking I'm for it. I'm not looking. Yeah. If I see him in a stack, I just push him to the side. I scour through CDs when we're there. Mm. Did you see how many CDs I bought last I time? I did. Yeah. It's going to yeah. be in the video. I pr- I'm probably buying 15 to 20 CDs wow. at a time when I'm there. I Very know, selective. I There's just, so much garbage of it. It yeah. has been so hard to not be two years old. And make a CDs and that's joke this whole time. So I just had to get that out of the way. <laughs> oh my God. I, I've been like struggling. Right over my head. I, I've been struggling. Like I looked at Ricky like three times, like, <laughs> like, like I want to get him so bad, you know. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So how, like what is the quickest way as someone like ever like burned a bridge with you? Oh gosh. I mean, well, oh gosh. I don't wanna I don't wanna call You don't have to any, say any no, no, names. I'm not gonna call any names yeah. out, but we've seen it recently, Ricky, of a of 
people we know will say where um oh god i want to hurt people's feelings too much where people are putting these items so much more above the relationship yeah. right and it'd be like if chris and i showed up at a booth together and both wanted the same thing and couldn't civilly agree on it as adults like, you could just take whatever i had yeah see there you go <laughs> <laughs> right be a bully i don't know i'm like yes chris <laughs> chris does have that bully look just start doing that <laughs> no. give me that curtis <laughs> nice <Yours>. bye <laughs> but if, if if chris and i or ricky whoever insert any name can't agree on who should get what or how or who showed up first or who whatever if there's no civil agreement in it then there's a big problem and that's what we've seen not in, in our own way Per se, I've never seen any really like vendor bridges being burned, but I've seen it in people in our community. And it just makes me sad. You yeah. know, I've I, had a couple issues with that. We talked about that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That you always like out people. hunting and finding. I always what? <laughs> scalp. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I'm honestly like we're hunting like that where people get like overly aggressive with their fines their fines yep. and it's not you guys it's people that i don't know that where i've had those instances yeah like me like a scumbag you know yeah. I mean? i'm probably one <laughs> of the laziest you. resellers like my whole garage is just full of inventory you are a lazy reseller i can i can i can i can stand strong i told that. i told her if i was like riff dude this is terrible man i need your help <laughs> yeah. it's, lazy it's upsetting reseller. because like we're adults right and it's like i feel like i shouldn't be i'm not even speaking to these people anymore but like i shouldn't be in a space where if what I'm doing can cause me such anger towards like a friend of mine or someone I consider my friend, right? Like if I feel like if it turned me on Ricky, so to say, I'd be like, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be in this space, so to say. And we're going to finish it on this like last question. I think uh, you guys would kind of know a little bit more about how, how are there different levels of sourcing? different ways yes oh gosh i'm pretty I, dumb so. i drove to vegas nine hours yesterday to go source stuff yeah but we knew it wasn't Five just for hours. games we knew it wasn't just for games yeah, no, it was. <laughs> <laughs> he's no, gonna just get kidding. in trouble <laughs> yeah. i'm kidding no but for sourcing yeah, that's that sometimes what it takes i mean all different avenues and ways i mean obviously i have the stores that stuff comes in comes into yeah. but i literally drove five hours one way each way so it was like 10 hours of and, our, and our friend yesterday. ben just went to vegas to get neo geo stuff and that and was a big come up that was big. that's a big come up that was a good score that ben got yeah really good one it really just sourcing is such a, a a ebb and flow of just kind of keeping your ears and eyes open i would say you know follow the pages you need to follow join the groups make the relationships and as they come again i don't do it for a living so i'm yeah. not like gotta source gotta source right. yeah. or else I, my family doesn't eat so to say yeah I do, but I'm not out sourcing that much. I yes. only kind of go after like bigger leads now. Like I went out to Vegas yesterday to go basically source like a, there's a big, a comic chain mm -hmm. uh, that has a bunch of, they, they have a, they had an absolute massive warehouse there. Mm. It was like 60,000 square feet of comics, wow, wow. figures, figures. Vi some video <laughs> games, t-shirts, everything. That's amazing. And so we went out. What's that? So that's amazing. Oh, it was unbelievable. I'm a lot of it was a lot of junk, but we went through and I mean, so that was what I went. <laughs> well, the th that, that's the typical standard for buying stuff in big lots. A lot of junk and some good stuff. Just like this channel, which you need to subscribe to. A lot of junk, but some good stuff. And we're going to get out of here. That's it, boys. Yeah, close nice. it out, baby. Chris, give us a, a good smile to the camera because uh, you're the third handsomest one in the room. All right. <laughs>